Okie dokie. Hello everybody, good morning. My pants are falling off. Alright, Miss Tilly Billy. Come here. Get in. How is everybody? Stand. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Back it up. Load the back truck. Okay. I hope everybody's well. This is Tilly. She's a golden doodle or a groodle. A giant. Your big girl. So I've been grooming Tilly since she was about one. Ooh, maybe. Uh oh. What's happened there? I've been grooming Tilly since she was about one. Oh, I fell over. Um, she was one of my hardest dogs to groom, believe it or not. <laughs> She's an absolute lunatic. She used to throw her paws everywhere, just jump up and down, constantly moving and grooving and carrying on. Uh, for the blow dryer, I used to have to put a muzzle on her, a happy hoodie, wrap her head in like a thick chamois towel, and then um, put a cone on her to blow dry her without getting bitten. And now she's pretty chill. So I don't really want to do a free clip, but I'm going to because she's still like, even though she's gotten good with the blow dryer, she's not perfect. And she certainly has her limitations. So the less blow drying, the better for this dog. Um, it'll be quicker to do the free clip than to try and blow dry. And it doesn't look like much hair, but um, it usually is more than it looks. So the blow drying at the same time as dealing with her anxiety or discomfort, that is very time consuming. Um, I have um, ovulation pain today. I woke up late at about 8.20, so I woke up about 40, 50 minutes ago <laughs> and realized I was in a lot of pain. So um, I'm gonna be dealing with that today which absolutely sucks. Tilly Willie's gonna be a pretty much nose to toes shave down. Saving her tail and ears, is it? Um, scary. I only have six weeks, six days till surgery, which means this is the last time I'm going to have this ovulation pain in my right ovary. And if my surgery gets cancelled, I'm going to be devastated because this has got to be the last time that I have to live through this bloody pain. Um, the last time I said the last time, my surgery got cancelled. So, touch wood, the last freaking time because I am in agony right now. We have three doggies to do today. Uh, we've got Tilly, Chino, who's a cavoodle, but I think he's a big boy. And then we've got Bear, who's a German Shepherd, I think. If my memory serves me well, which it usually doesn't, but we'll have a go at my memory. Just three big dogs, which is good because um, most of the time these big dogs are actually a little bit easier than doing the little dogs. Not totally, in a different kind of way. I don't have to lean over as much. Does that make sense? So I did not sleep well last night. I kept waking up and probably because I was in pain. I don't really know. I kept waking up and being like, nope, I'm going to sleep. Tossing and turning for most of the night, which is no fun. No fun at all. Hey Jackie, how you doing? Ah, oh, you found us. We've missed you. Haven't seen you for. Well, I've seen you kind of on and off, right? Oh goodness. Let's hope I can survive this day. I don't want to be here. That's terrible. I love my job, um, and I love being at work. But um, I have had a few, probably two or three good months without any real severe pain. 
which is fantastic. Um, but I reckon I've got a big old cyst on my ovary forming and the pressure is phenomenal. Oh, stop panting. You're putting panting lines in you. Stop it. She coined the term panting lines. It's not panty lines. <laughs> Oh, Amanda from the UK is here. Hi, Amanda. How you doing? I hope you're good. Sorry, I'm far away from the chat. I need to put my glasses on so I can see. Stop huffing, please. Here, close your mouth for a second. This doggy has a couple of lumps. There's one here that um, I think is just a fatty tissue. The vets have had a look at it and weren't concerned about it. So I think it's just like a fatty tissue type lump. And there's one on one of her ears, but we're not shaving her ears, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, she's had like a surgery to remove the one on her ear because it was bothering her. She kept scratching at it and then opening it. Uh, causing bleeding and just it got really messy. So mum did get that one removed. But I think there's like some um, scar tissue there left over, so that's what the bump is. Uh, what's exciting? I don't have a lot exciting. I haven't really done much other than work, eat, and sleep. I've been rather exhausted this week. With very little motivation to do anything at all, really. Oh, you've been having a hard day? With, uh, it says breach. I don't know what that is. is. Do you mean heat? Was it a typo? Or am I stupid? I'm probably stupid and don't know what that is. But I'm sorry to hear that you're having a hard day. That's no fun. I'll put this up a little bit. Sorry, lady. Let me position myself a little differently. Hey, Lois, how you doing? How's the weather? Oh, that's Girl with Animals. Hi, Girl with Animals. Sorry, I didn't say hello to everybody that's here. kind of got straight into it. Um, the uh, Tilly's mum, I know her quite well. We have kids the same age and go to the same school and stuff like that. So I know her quite well. And uh, we were just getting to having a big old chitter chat. As you do in a small country town when you know people. I had a customer experience yesterday that I don't really know how to handle. Like it's just been playing on my mind, um, like bothering me because I just don't really know. Uh, like I'm definitely not a customer's always right person. That's like BS if you ask me. Um, but I of course want to have happy customers. So it's something I try to do, you know, have everybody happy all of the time to the very best of my ability. Um, so this, this lady is absolutely lovely, uh, her dog is quite difficult to groom, um, but in like the opposite of the way that you would think. She's difficult to groom because she's a potato, she just like, she just becomes a wet noodle on the table and I lift her bum up and she's doing like doggy yoga and she just moves a lot and um, just generally makes it difficult to groom her but for no reason. Um, she doesn't bite or be aggressive or anything like that. She just flops around everywhere and just makes it... I mean, you need them to stand to groom them and follow the lines and that sort of stuff. If they're not able to stand and do that, it then becomes very difficult to put nice lines on the dog and then you've got to wrestle them around to try and get them in the right positions and it's all very um, difficult when the dog is like that. 
So um, it does take a little bit longer. That's fine. I don't actually charge this particular client anything extra, even though it takes about 30 to 45 minutes longer than it should take. Just in the time it takes to wrestle the cheeky dog. So uh, one thing was, um, you know, oh, I, I need her done quickly today. I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I can't do this doggy um, quickly. Just not a chance, it's not gonna happen. Um, it's gonna take as long as it takes. So I always say, you know, like, uh, yep, all right, I understand. Um, now, when we book her in for grooming, you do need to account for extra time because she just needs extra time. It's not probably ever going to be quick. Um, it'll always take as long as it takes and that's what this particular dog needs. So uh, I will do my best to go as quickly as I can, but it's not gonna be that quick. Um, which is like, whatever, okay. But it kind of puts a pressure on me when um, the dog is not going to make it any easier. Like, <laughs> I, I can do a quicker but not very good groom, or we can do it as nicely as possible and work around the needs of the dog um, and keep the dog happy and content. No licking, please keep the dog happy and content and you know not put her under any extra stress just so I can get her out quicker you know what I mean she just needs more time that's just the way it is with that dog so there's that uh, but then on pickup this particular client does not want a recurring schedule they just want to book their appointment like when they pick up the dog they'll book the next appointment which is like fair enough um, I don't, I'm not a fan of putting in like repeating schedules and stuff because I don't know what I'm doing from one day to the next. I totally get that. However, a lot of people do want recurring schedules and those people are filling up my books very quickly. And so it's becoming difficult to get appointments at the six week mark or the eight week mark. Um, there's no appointments because I'm already booked up. Uh, and that's my books for the winter is pretty much all booked up and the second we hit spring I'll be booked up until February next year so if we get to about October I'm, I'm booked there's nothing left um, and I keep saying this to people like you know um, and they're like but I'm a regular customer I always come back I know but so does everybody else but they've already put theirs in so you just you just get left with whatever's available and if there's nothing available then I can't put you in there but I'm a regular customer, you should reserve a spot for me. Which spot? I'm happy to reserve a spot for you. Which spot would you like me to reserve for you? No, 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 no. There should just be appointments available when I get here. No, I can't, like, I can't de deny other customers an appointment on the chance that somebody else might want to have that spot. I, my goal is to fill my books. My goal is to be busy all of the time, um, and so, then I get there like, you know, well, have you taken on too many clients? Yes, but I'm keeping the ones with a recurring schedule and moving aside the ones that do not have a recurring schedule because that's how, you know, you run things. You, you fill the books up with people you know are coming, but you know I'm coming. I do know that you're coming, but you haven't said when, so I can't hold all of the spots. I have to fill them. It gets, um, it gets difficult, you know, and so what's the, I've suggested to definitely put in a, re a recurring schedule until at least December because she's not going to get any appointments. When I get back from my surgery, I'm going to have a couple of weeks that, you know, are going to be a little bit quiet and then it's just going to be full steam ahead until Christmas or February when the weather starts to cool down a bit or everybody's dog has been groomed. Um, it, like that's not going to change. It's been that way for three years. It's gonna to continue to be that way. And I've pre-warned people and then you just get some people that are like, no, we'll just see. I'll just let you know when we get, you know, when we pick her up next time. And I'm like, there will not be an appointment. I'm trying to like definitely make that clear. At that time, there will not be an appointment. Um, so it's really hard. So yeah, you've got to juggle people and I do my best. Like I don't force people onto recurring schedules. I say, you can do whatever you want, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, but if you take the chance of waiting that long, there's not going to be an appointment. Uh, and I'm not trying to like fear you into, can we just turn around, can we just turn around please? Oh my goodness. Stand up, stand up. Good girl. All right, did we freak out there for a second? 
you know you're fine come here over here come on no here turn around you can do it you're a big doggy but you're fine there's plenty of room for you i got you there we go talk about making it harder than it needs to be young lady back it up back it up stand good girl um yeah so it's like such a juggling act Yeah, uh, it could be the one that acts like squirt a little bit. Yeah, not too sure. Anyways, it just makes it like you you want to have happy customers, but also um, I'm it is a business, and like I'm super flexible. If you've got an, a, a recurring schedule in, and you give me a call and you're like, yeah, so we've got an appointment in like four weeks time, and I really don't think we're gonna need it, or I'm not gonna be available on that day. I'll say, yeah, no worries. Let us have a look and see if there's any other spot we can put you into. And then if there's not a spot, I will leave their appointment where it is and say, if I get a cancellation come through, I will offer you that spot first. Um, and, but we'll leave the appointment where it is. I'm not gonna cancel it or give it to somebody else. Just in case I can't find anything, maybe you might have a way to, you know, maybe your plans might change or something. Um, and there's always a cancellation somewhere, so you know I can do that. It's I don't mind. I'm I've got no issue moving people around where there's room to move them around, or cancelling their appointment one month because it's not needed or they're not going to be here or whatever. It doesn't bother me one bit. I'm like, yeah, no worries. See you next time. Your next appointment's on this day. If I don't even there's you don't need to give me a reason. You don't need to explain yourself. You just need to say, hey, can we please cancel this appointment? I won't be available. And usually I'll just say to them, no worries, are you wanting to reschedule or just cancel altogether? Some people say, no, just cancel altogether. Cool, all good. I know I can fill that spot. I've got four weeks to do it or whatever. It doesn't bother me one bit. Or they'll say reschedule. Then I say, I'll give you a call and we'll have a look at what we can do for you. So it's not like I'm locking you into something um, that you can't get out of. It's just holding a spot. It's just a reservation of a spot. Oh. Yeah, Lois, how do you make... I booked a doctor's appointment for one of the kids and it's like, I don't know, four or five weeks away. To be fair, there were some other appointments available, but I had to book around my working schedule, so that made it a little bit tricky. But other than that... Um, yeah. Also, I was a bit fussy on which doctor we went with. Normally I'm just like, whatever, just whatever doctor we can see because I don't have time for this crap. Um, we don't actually see doctors very often in this family, well, except for me. I feel like I'm seeing a doctor every five minutes, but I mean like the GP. Not very often. Thank goodness. Um, when I was growing up, I grew up in a family where everything was a GP visit. Let's go to the GP. Let's go to the GP. Which is quite funny because now I quite literally um, do not ever take my kids to the doctor. That sounds terrible. They're vaccinated. I'm pro-vax. They're all vaccinated. Um, and their medical needs are, you know, addressed as required. But they get a sniffle. I'm like, go to bed. Take some. Here's some Panadol, here's a bottle of water, here's a bucket. Go to bed, you'll be right, mate. Keep an eye on them, they come good in a day or two. Obviously, if they're like terribly, terribly ill, then we go to the emergency room because uh, they, you know, need additional support through whatever illness they have. But fortunately, just not at the GP all the time.
actually something funny I just thought of. I got my belly button pierced by the, the GP once. <laughs> they used to do piercings when piercings first started being like, this would be, oh goodness. It must have been early 2000s. It wouldn't have been late 90s. But early 2000s when every man and his dog wanted a body piercing all of a sudden. Um, the GP used to do nose, ear and belly button piercing. If you said that to them now, hey, do you do belly button piercing? They'd be like, what the heck? No. <laughs> it's quite funny. Uh, my body did reject the piercing and it grew out. I did four other belly button piercings. My body has rejected all of them. So I gave up on that. I tried different um, jewelry and stuff like that, but no. My body was just like, no, thank you. We would not be having that. itchy today. Alright, we're looking good. Made really well. Can't see my chat, you big heads in the way. Oh yay, lost got your laptop, that's awesome. Yeah, Australia's having a bad time. Hey TC Bear, how you doing? Um, yeah, Australia's like going down the drain, man. Real fast. There have been some wild events that are just very un-Australian to happen. Uh, I won't talk about it because it's in the chat and you guys can uh, follow on that way, but so, so sad and tragic. And like I said, very un-Australian. This is not a thing that happens here. It does now, like twice in one week. That is, um, uh, I don't even know what to say, but I, like, I don't watch the news and watch bad or sad things and stuff like that, but um, this one made it all the way to be in my face no matter what I was doing, so, 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 so very sad. Um, I can imagine, that I know some people live in countries where that sort of thing happens every day, multiple times a day, all over the place, uh, and I just could not imagine being in that. Yeah, that would just be so hard and scary and sad. You are puffing along there. <laughs> You're a good girl coming in today.
Mm. She's got like the deepest armpits I think I've ever seen. Oh. Okay, that's somewhat tiny. This side is it. Put you down and do your noggin. Actually, no, I might do sanitary real quick while you're here. <laughs> Dale, you guys live in the same country, do you know each other? You must be neighbours, surely. <laughs> Although the UK is a much smaller place than, uh, well, Australia for a start. Uh, after work, take something to take the edge off my pain. Absolutely. A uh, nice, lovely pain reliever and a big nap is going to be in order. Maybe a hot, hot, hot shower too. Uh, it definitely makes sense because boy was I in a mood yesterday. I was a grumpy, grumpy lady. be the lovely drop in hormones or spike whichever way it goes I think it's a spike on this side and then a drop on the other side that's when I'm, I'm gonna migraine yay <laughs> this the spike is this pain and the drop is the migraine aren't women's bodies amazing Is this an anxious dog? Hey Becca, um, she, yes, yes, she has been in the past, although she has been very good for some time now. She's coming, uh, she's come a long, long way and um, she is significantly more comfortable with the process. And her behavior has improved immensely, although there are things that do make her a little bit of a nervous Nelly. She mostly does a fantastic job. <laughs> some cream at me. Someone's got to put me in my place. I did a nail trim yesterday and oh my goodness it took half an hour. It took me and the pet parent to <laughs> wrangle this dog. 
Uh, I have trimmed his nails before when he was a puppy, I think, or, or a bit younger at least. Um, and I had told the pet parent to go to the vet and have them done there because it was too dangerous for me to do it here in the salon. Um, so she's been going to the vet for a while. Um, but aside from charging twice the price that I charge, they were not actually successfully cutting the nails. So they were taking the dog back for um, 15 minutes or whatever, charging twice the price that I charge for a nail trim and then saying, and this is fair enough, like I get it, um, saying, oh, we could only do two of his nails, we couldn't hold him still. Which, um, like, you're in a vet's office, they, they come to you for a reason, vet groomer. They come to you because the other groomers who are not in a vet office have said it's too dangerous to do. Like, work with your vet, get some sedation, light sedation, or some muscle relaxants, or some anti-anxiety medication, whatever it is. Like, talk to the vet and make that a thing that happens for that dog. But that hasn't happened. Um, so his nail shrimps have not gone well at all. So had really long nails, sore toes, and continued to be extremely anxious for his nail trim. So uh, she asked if she could come back and try again with me, and I was like, I mean, we can try. <laughs> that's that's all I can say. We can give it a go. Um, but yeah, I did say, you know, the reason why I sent you to go or referred you to go to the vet was because they could offer additional um, support such as medications or more than one set of hands and um, people with, you know, uh, animal handling skills and things like that. Um, but yeah, that didn't happen. So it's been um, a year, something crazy like that. Um, and that just hasn't happened. So that's really frustrating. As a pet parent, I know she spent hundreds of dollars on regular appointments when nothing's happening. Um, which is just making it difficult. And the dog's behavior is only getting worse. So he came in, we wrestled him, we utilized, he's too big for the hammock, uh, which makes it hard. So we um, utilized the grooming safer harness, these two points but on both sides of the table where I put both of them on to keep him down because he was jumping up we used um, this thing we I didn't muzzle him although he started to get really snappy with me um, initially he was like doing the licking he was licking my hands like you know lick 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 you need to stop I don't like this excellent communication which I was praising him good boy that's that's good communication and i um, trying to listen to him and um, work around that. These nails are not long enough for me to even snip a little bit off but the front ones are. Um, and yeah, I was trying, you know, to listen to him and, and hear his communication and stuff. After a while, he got so freaked out that he did start to get to mouthing with a little bit of force. That's still biting. I'm not saying it's not biting, but if we're looking at it from a spectrum, if we've got mouthing here with um, no force, to a full force bite. He was just a little bit, you know, over that line. So um, putting a little bit of pressure on and, and saying like, these are my teeth. You're gonna regret this if you keep going, lady. Um, which I tried to just keep with it, keep him calm, but it wasn't really happening. He was freaking all the way out. Uh, which is kind of like where we were last time. He was, you know, so freaked out that he was hurting himself by throwing himself around like a little bit of a goose and um, we don't want the dogs to get hurt here uh, and it was getting to a point where I've learned to shut my mouth when, I'm kind of <laughs> when I cut the nails sometimes they fly in your mouth um, it was getting to the point where you know he was really starting to hurt himself with how he was throwing himself around uh, I did have mum assisting as well and um, yeah it was pretty dang hard but we managed to get them all done. Some were not cut as well as others, but it's done. And it's gonna come back in like, I don't know, four weeks or something. Um, so we can do it again, yay. So we're just gonna try do regular appointments. Now that the nails are cut right back, um, we're just gonna try and do, you know, fairly regular appointments so that we can keep just keep going 
Um, if it's done regularly and we miss a nail, it's like not the end of the world. Who cares? Whatever, we missed a nail. I wasn't going to turn her around because she really isn't good at turning around. So I need to do the other side. And if I don't do it now, I'll completely forget. So, oh, look at that. You're a pro. Okay, stand. Good girl. You're okay. You're okay. Oh, shouldn't have sat down so hard. Um, yeah, it's really hard on the pet parent too because they get, I mean, this pet parent did really well. I said to her, like, you just remember that your behavior um, contributes to his behavior. So if you're really stressed out, you're anxious, you get teary or anything like that, you've got to make it worse. If you can be here and just take it from the perspective that we're not doing anything to hurt him and he's just being a really silly boy, uh, and getting himself worked up. If you can just keep yourself super chill, super neutral, don't get mad at him, just be, you know, like reset him back to the position we want him to be in and when he's there, tell him he's a good boy. Um, if he's, you know, really freaking out, just be like, calm down, you're okay, just reassuring, like, uh, but if you're gonna be very emotional, very upset, distressed, anxious, any of those things, he's just gonna feed off that and get worse. So. Uh, she said, no, 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 I get it, I get it, um, we'll be all good. So she did come in and help, and she did really, really well, which is fantastic um, to have those extra hands, because I wouldn't have got it done without the extra set of hands. <laughs> Not a chance. Um, she kept him from getting, he was very, very crafty. He got out of the harness several times. Um, he did kick me in the face. <laughs> he did kick me in the face. With these dogs being so skilled in karate these days. Yeah, he was a wriggly little woo. So that was fun. Um, he did get snappy, which was unfortunate. I tried to like keep him from getting to that point. I tried to keep calming him down as we went to try to prevent him from getting to the point where he got snappy and bitey. Um, but unfortunately, we kind of lost that towards the end on the last, uh, just the last foot. I put a cone on him. I didn't put a muzzle on, I just put a cone on. And mum kind of held his head. But, yeah, there's, there's definitely some hard ones. And I, I had to be honest with her, uh, you know, a lot of dogs do just get better. But a lot of dogs do not ever get better. It never gets better for them. It, they, it doesn't change. Um, and there's not a lot you can do about it other than to, I mean, walking them, you can get um, treat boards that have like a sandpaper grit on it so they scratch to get the treat, wears the nails down, if you want to get the back ones down you can do jumping activities with them where they do a lot of jumping uh, and, and just generally walking on a concrete or bitumen or rough surface, rocks, whatever, um, all that stuff makes a huge difference to wear them down naturally and if there's ever a problem uh, or they're, you know, super long nails, that's when you need to do a sedation to get them done and um, right back and then leave them go for another year and then take them in to get another sedation and get them done. Uh, but, but unfortunately, some dogs just really do not do well with it and, and that's just the way that it is. And I wouldn't say it's because he's had like a bad experience. He's a Border Collie, Kelpie, whatever, cross. A bits of this and that, which is pretty common around here. Uh, and he's an anxious dog. He's very intelligent and he's got a lot on his mind. And he overthinks everything. So another thing is to consider uh, the time of day that we do his nail trim and also how much activity both mental stimulation and physical he's had throughout the day. Unfortunately, mum is working quite a lot, so uh, I think there's two contributing factors there. One, he's not getting enough mental stimulation throughout the day, and two, he's not getting enough physical activity to, you know, burn off some of that nervous energy that he's got. So, um, that sort of contributes to that. So we've got him booked in for a couple of more appointments, but I did say to her, after I come back from having my surgery, uh, let's look at doing a Saturday morning appointment, which is not something I would offer to pretty much anybody. Um, 
But if she can get him out and take him for at least a full hour of running, sniffing, being active, chasing bulls, all that sort of stuff for at least an hour, but even two hours and get his brain worn right out so that he is just, you know, ready for a freaking nap. Wear out his body, wear out his brain. So he needs to be sniffing, investigating, chasing things, um, just all of those things that gets his brain turning over and thinking about stuff. If he's doing all of that for at least an hour, he will get worn right out. Take him for a long walk through a shrubby, shrubby area. Take him to the dog park to throw a ball. Uh, take him for a walk around where other dogs pee on trees and stuff. Really, really, really get all of his beans out of him. And then come in for the nail trim immediately after. Don't give him too long to rest. So his brain's tired, his body's tired. He ain't got no energy for nothing. And then try then and see if all that nervous energy is just, you know, used up, it's spent. He ain't got no energy beans for nothing. Because for now, we brought him in, um, you know, mum finished work and she went home, put him in the car and brought him here. And that's when he had his nail trim done. After being at home for the day with um, not really any entertainment or people to hang out with or things to do. Um, and then he has to come and do something that he thinks is scary. So, you know, it's probably not going to work that way or that well. Bree, how you doing? And Kay's here, hello. I hope you gals are well. Yeah, so um, that will be, you know, after I come back from my surgery. I don't have time to be doing anything like that now because um, I've got a lot of preparations to get onto. Let's sit you down. Here, hey. Good girl. Over here though, this way. There we go. You're fine. There we go. Uh, yeah, so we'll go, we'll do that. Not that far away. Um, and might be super helpful for him. Uh, and it's like something like that doesn't work, then yeah, you do reach a point where it is, I mean, it was already borderlining being unsafe with this dog. Um, with how he was tossing himself around and his panic and that he was getting towards, you know, I'm going to bite you if you touch me. Um, when I groom dogs, like do their full grooming and they get have that sort of behavior, I don't even trim their nails. I'm just like, yeah, nah. So I can't trim his nails. You have to, you know, manage that yourself because it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. If the dog's going to get hurt just by being silly, their own behavior is going to hurt them. And I've used every piece of equipment that I have in this salon to try to keep that dog safe. And I still can't keep them safe or myself safe. I, it, it can't be done. It just can't be done. Um, and that's where I say to people, yes, so you'll need to go to the vet. And then if the vet's not offering any support or the vet groomer specifically is not offering the appropriate support, well then what are they supposed to do? That sucks um, because I do frequently um, refer people with extremely anxious dogs for nail trims over to the vet because that's what you do. If I can't do it safely here, the vet needs to do it. They need to manage that. Sit. They need to manage it with, um, uh, you know, handling skills, medications, equipment. That's a vet thing. Anyway. So I've had a few of those lately coming back to me, like, yeah, so it's just not happening. <laughs> we're paying all this money and nothing's happening. Oh dear. We're, then we're getting told, oh, I could only do this or I could only do that. Um, which I get at, from the groomer perspective, but hello, the reason they went to the vet is because they needed extra support from the vet. Like, let's do that. Frustrating. Um, and I will take on a lot, you know, like my limitations on silly dogs is pretty high. I've got a, a pretty good tolerance for silly behavior. Yeah, you can breathe through your nose. You are not going to die. Breathe through your nose. 
can do a fine. You're still puffing through your closed mouth instead of breathing through your nose. You really need to get your nose checked. Maybe it doesn't work. You got a broken nose? <laughs> this one dog, even when I hold her mouth closed, she's still got out the side of her cheeks. You have to have your mouth closed so I don't cut your tongue off while I'm doing this. That's all. All right. In, in, in. No, you put it in. It's not even for that long. So in the past she's had like a really big teddy bear head and stuff like that. Um, and mum's gone towards this shorter style, which for this dog I absolutely love because she hates the blow dryer so much on her head and face. It was just getting really messy in there. The hair, the build up of like just the having wet hair, air drying, so much hair. It takes so long to dry, you get like a build up of, I don't know, not yeast, but just bacteria. And um, it was, you know, it just, it's not that, it's not very pleasant and it's smelly. Even if you wash it, if you can't dry it, you're just gonna, you end up with the same bacteria building up again and ugh. So I really love getting all of the hair off this dog's face. Bree's doing as good as she can be. Yeah, I know that feeling. Not as probably not in the same position as you though. How's your uh, ticker going? Hanging in there? I'm trying to read the chat. Oh. Yeah, you got to do what's best for the animal. Absolutely. Hey, Bob. How you doing? How short should you groom a Pomchi? Right now she looks like a hippie. I'm assuming that means lots of hair. Um, you don't want to go below the undercoat line. So I personally, me, I would do it no shorter than a 19 millimeter. Just let me grab the thing and tell you how many that inches that is. Oh, oh how cute. So you can cut them short. You got, just have to understand that um, you if you're cutting the undercoat, you could risk um, alopecia, um, you know, problems with alopecia and damaging the coat and, and it not growing back or becoming very rough and, and not very nice. So I personally wouldn't go any shorter than uh, three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeter. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that to focus. Uh, no, it's not going to focus. Do it. Let me find a wide blade one. Yeah, this one, there you go. Can you read that? No, it's not any better. <laughs> it's 19 millimeter or three quarter inch. Um, I would go any shorter than that, although I have um, I have a Pomeranian that goes on a 13 millimeter, but that dog is getting uh, alopecia uh, hair loss and um, the hair is the top coat, those beautiful shiny hairs are not growing back. Uh, so some, in some areas the hair is 13 millimeters and it does not grow any more than that. It just stays at that 13 millimeter. Um, so yeah, you just have to know that. Whatever length you cut it to, that could be the only growth that ever happens in the future. Um, technically the dog should have you know, just trim the outline of the dog rather than cut all of the hair. Um, but yeah. Oh, you got one like that? Perfect. Just don't, probably don't go any shorter than that. That's all. It should grow back. Mm, 
you're still at risk because you're cutting the hair. You're still at risk of ending up with um, some alopecia or you know not as well much growth. But it, you'll still have that 19 millimeter of growth. So it's not completely the worst thing in the world. If it's shorter, then you'll have only those short hairs, and they might they may never come back. Ah, uh, she just a puppy, is she? Get a wriggle on? Yes, I'm about to get a wriggle on. Just give me one second, guys. I'm just gonna take a break for a minute. Swan band? Is that what it's called? I wasn't looking at you. This is Anastasia, isn't it? With the, the, the scene with the dancing hippos. You seem to be on a roll with your scissors, paper, rocks with your winnings. I just, I'm feeling this. You are. Okay, right. scissors, paper, rocks, sheet. <clears throat> You're not going to win this one. I, I'm going to warn you. I'm going to do this left handed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> are we ready? Um, scissors, paper, rocks, left handed. I'm doing it left handed. I can't do left handed. I couldn't even pull up a scissor one of the, a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> okay. Are we ready? Yes. Just do it. Okay. Scissors, paper, rocks, shoot. Ooh, spicy. Yeah. Yeah. You're going down. <laughs> You're going down with the left. He's bringing fighting words. Who was oh, that? Have a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I don't know. That's not ballet. <laughs> That's not ballet. All right. Oh gosh. Right. I don't even. I've got nothing now. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's just psychological it. warfare. Go. Scissors, paper, paper rock, shoot. Oh come on. <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie, let's get your face finished. Can you sit for me? Good girl. Alright, so once we get the last of this hair off our hairy girl, she'll have a wash blow dry and then we'll just go over everything again real quick. Scissor up her tootsie wootsies. 
a little bit on her face and ears. Um, I don't trim her tail because she's got more of a golden retriever tail. It does not keep growing. Um, and the length that it is, is fine. She doesn't get it too messy, although I think she's got some matting just at the base. Can we go up, please? Yeah. too much of a mess today, girly well. Bob. I'm glad you enjoyed the stream and thank you for popping in. The time difference is hard sometimes. It doesn't line up well for a lot of people. All right, sweet pea, you ready to have a bath? You ready for a bath? Wait, wait, we're gonna, hang on, slow down. You've gone too fast. Wait, you're gonna have a bath, all right? Let's go. Yeah, no, remember the bath. There we go. Knee lift. Yeah. Good girl. All the way. You did it. Well done. Good girl. Okie dokie. Ready? Are you ready? Who wants to collapse some crates for you? I'll do it. <laughs> Might be a bit far to travel though. Oh, it's been three plus weeks. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a long time. Do you have to do any sort of rehab or physiotherapy or anything or do you just go straight back to it. So they give you exercises. Excuse me. Clean it up. Okay. Yeah, water in your ears. Thank you. I'm trying to drink the bath water. Bit soapy. 
probably doesn't taste the best. Yeah, we'll have some fresh water in a minute. So I reach, yeah, stop drinking the bath water. Yeah, unnecessary shaking. Oh, you never notice the freckles? Yeah, usually you can't see them until you shave everything off and wet them down. And then you're like, oh my God, freckles. Some dogs have so many, they're adorable. I always notice them because I think they're super cute. Oh, you don't want this water, you just want the bath water. <laughs> yeah, you need some water? No, you just want to drink the bath water. Yeah. <laughs> you're a rat bag. Yeah, you're a rat bag. So she does have some de-shedding shampoo on, which is supposed to soak for five minutes. I'm just gonna quickly vacuum up all this hair and get ready for blow drying and um, 
that's probably going to take me a couple of minutes and then we'll go from there. I'm going to put some music on real quick for you guys because my vacuum cleaner is loud AF. Okey-dokey. I've been pretty good on my um, like in-between cleaning, which is making my overall cleaning a lot easier. If you vacuum up that bulk hair before you blow dry, you don't blow that hair everywhere. So I know it's a bit inconvenient, but it works well. Oh my goodness. Hey Stephanie. Oh, that's really sad and difficult, Stephanie. I'm sorry to hear it. You're all right, Tilly. I've got everything ready for you. Couple more minutes. Let your shampoo do its work. Give your little cheeky pegs a brushy wash. Give your cheeky pegs a brushy wash. haven't even started yet. Put your tongue away. Hey, sit down. Alright, sit. This is why we need extra toothpaste for you, because you're a gremlin. Yeah, you're a gremlin. Is it yummy toothpaste? Sit. No 
咁又按住佢。That's my finger. You bit it. You bit my whole finger. So I don't brush a lot of dogs' teeth unless you're brushing them at home regularly as well. Um, it's not really going to do anything much to help them. They need daily brushing if you want to keep them in good condition for at least a few times a week. Um, so Tilly's mum does some tooth brushing at home, so there is some benefit to me trying to have a good brush here as well to help with teaching her to get a bit more comfortable with it and trying to get into some of those trickier to reach spots that mum might struggle with. It's not a dental, it's a quick kind of brush so it's um, you know the best we can do more than anything uh, but definitely need to be brushing at home on a regular basis to make it worth it. Cut it out you goober. Good girl. Alright, that'll do ya. That'll do ya. We've kind of touched on most of those teeth. And... Hang on a second, sorry. I can put a little to put this on to dry. We've had a bit of a scrub on all of the teeth and the gummies and her tongue because she made sure that I got her tongue. <laughs> all right, let your toothbrush dry and we'll put that away later. Do I sell toothpaste? I do not, no. Um, it can be tricky to get a hold of. Uh, it can definitely be tricky to get a hold of. I can probably get some in, I've just not um, thought about it. So if you wanted some, I can get a price for you. Thank you. 
Cindy. Knitting some socks. Nice. Happy knitting. And we'll see you between rows, I guess. <laughs> Uh, for some reason, they seem to charge like ridiculously overcharged with dog toothpaste in comparison to human toothpaste. I don't know. Maybe they just don't have the same turnover, so it costs more to, for production or something. Who knows? Yeah, they're using peanut butter toothpaste, and you like it, don't you? You like to eat it all.
wash with me. Uh, have I used any new shampoo? No. So that won't get open until the bottle before it gets emptied. Because um, they've got used five dates on them, so I use them all in the water. So it's all, um, I open up the package, everything uh, marked up. I label all my bottles with the date that they were brought in. I just have some ear cleaner on some little pads. Give her ears a wipe out. Oh, this with some dirty ears. Fiona, how you doing? Good to see ya. We're doing good. Halfway to your brain that time. <laughs> you feel good. You feel good. Good girl. Okay, don't you? Get down. No, get down. So because she doesn't like the dryer on her face, I like to get this as dry as possible. Turn around. Yep. Turn. Yep. 
kick off? No. Oh. Oh. A big bum. I mean, me too, but still, you also have a big bum. This way. Stand up. Stand up. Oh. oh my goodness. Where are you going? Where are you going? Stand up. You're fine. You are okay. Okie dokie, here's some music and blow drying.
want you to stick around I don't want to say goodbye when the sun goes down I want to keep you close, want to hold you tight I don't ever want to say goodnight, but you stick around An hour or two will never be enough to be with you Whenever you leave, you leave me longing and blue Please, oh please, won't you stick around Spare just a little time, don't go running around I want to keep you close, want to hold you tight I don't ever want to say goodnight, but just stick around Well, if you leave, don't leave it oh so long Come on back where you know you belong When we're apart, how I long for you You stole my heart, don't you ever say we're through Please, oh please, won't you stick around Spare just a little time, don't go running around I want to keep you close, want to hold you tight I don't ever want to say goodnight, stick around Two will never be enough to be with you Whenever you leave, you leave me longing and blue Please, oh please, won't you stick around I don't want to say goodbye when the sun goes down I want to keep you close, want to hold you tight I don't ever want to say goodnight, won't you stick around
I can see birds flying. I see children smiling. When I think about all of the things that you and me could be. I want to be with you both day and night To sit on the grass beneath the moonlight I know that life won't last forever But at least we can grow together I can see the sunrise Reflecting in your eyes When I think about All of the things that you and me could be I want to be both day and night to sit on the grass beneath the moonlight I know that life won't last forever but at least we can grow together
Okie dokie, she is looking pretty dang good. Mostly dry, still a tiny bit damp on those ears, which doesn't surprise me. Um, actually, what does surprise me is how dry they are, because um, previously I could not dry those things to save my life. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna go grab a drink, I won't be a sec, guys. I won! Here you go. Take me back to my island. <laughs> well, if you stand there. Come on, island. The shark can hear you. Hi, Sharky. Thanks for having me back. I lost again. <laughs> I've got a costume. I can dance for you now. It's too sandy. Oh. It's too hard to dance in yeah. sand. You ever tried walking and running in sand? It's really good. Yeah. Say goodbye. You don't get time to. Oh, 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 have you been practicing? Yeah, I'm a pro at this. He just knows how to do it. Gills, boy! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. Yeah, that's it. Dodge box a bit. Oh. <laughs> It's uh, good to see you putting your head to use before it gets custard on it. If the VR doesn't work, you can replace it with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sometimes I hate that I'm related to you. <laughs> Okie dokie, let's get to work. See you a bit later, Brie. Take care. Don't do too much work. Hard work's not good for you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, let's do it. You've been a good girl today, Silly Willy. 
I've got to back you up a little bit because you've got your neck crunched up. There you go. Hey, Amber's here. Hey, Amber, how you doing? So you guys saw how long it takes to blow dry her even with no hair? <laughs> it still takes a long time. Imagine if I didn't take all that hair off first. It takes forever. I have done her um, the other way around with no pre-clip and it took me about an hour to blow dry her. Probably, probably a little over an hour just to get her dry. This cord is annoying me today. I'm usually not as irritated by it, but today it is annoying me. I think because um, I'm in more pain than usual, it makes me a little bit testy. So I took some Panadol and Urethane earlier. It's not really helping me. Maybe a little bit. I've certainly had worse pain than what I've got now. It's been a rough week for my old reproductive organs. <laughs> TMI. I certainly will not be sad to see them go, that's for sure. Still holding out hope that they'll take my left ovary with the right one. I know they're taking the right, but they didn't agree to take my left ovary. But hopefully they will. Then I will well and truly be done with it. Then I'll have the joy of trying to figure out a um, hormone replacement therapy that'll work for me. But I think they're getting better with that sort of stuff these days than they have in the past. Does anybody here use, um, if you don't have to say it, obviously, it's private, um, but if you wanted to, does anybody use hormone replacement therapy? Had any luck with anything in particular? I'm pro if I do keep my left ovary, hopefully my body will just do what it's supposed to do on its own. But I know some people that um, keep one ovary, it's just not enough. And you came home and took a nap? Nice. Okay, you never did, but you did all right without it. Be afraid to hold your own weight on your other three legs at any point. That would be very helpful. <sighs> You're heavy. Uh, Lois, I'm really hopeful of that with the migraines. Um, 
I know that with the type of migraine I have, uh, the hemiplegic migraines, hemiplegic, I think that's what they're called, um, that some women, they stop after menopause and other women, they actually get worse. So that is something that I'm quite fearful of um, because I'm actually, I'm actually scared of having a migraine. It is a very, very intense fear for me. I'm terrified of having a migraine. They are so painful and make me feel so unwell um, and take up so much of my life and all sorts of other things. I, I'm actually, I have a fear of having a migraine. So it's um, one of those horrible things. It's a risk, but I am super duper hopeful that they will stop altogether. If they don't, I'm going to, um, like once I get on the other side of all of this stuff, I'm going to um, find a migraine specialist doctor and look at having some, a different type of medication that is, uh, I think it's a fortnightly injection. It could be a monthly injection, I can't remember exactly, but uh, people are having really good results with that and it's starting to come into the like public system now so you can get it subsidized. Um, and people are having a huge reduction in the amount of migraines they're having. So if they do get worse, especially, or if they just continue after this surgery, that's something I'm going to look into. I've been trying quite a few medications lately to see if they help. They're not preventers. There's not, they don't really have any preventers that they know work. So they don't really prescribe them all that often anymore. Um, in talking to the, the, doctors that I have talked to over the last, I don't know, year, um, nobody, they all say the same thing, like, no, we've just, don't bother with the preventers, they don't work, which is true, I've tried them all in the past, but I'm trying to have a new medical record, a current medical record available, because the last time I tried these would have been anywhere from 15 to 20 years ago. So I'm going through trying all these medications again, and um, yeah, pretty much they just say no, they don't even work. So we just provide the like in the moment relief medications, which also for me, I have never found one that works. Um, there is a type of blood pressure medication that gets prescribed to people for migraines, and that was suggested to me. I have taken that in the past. I naturally have very low blood pressure. I sit on the, the lowest side of normal. Um, and so I did take a, a blood pressure type medication uh, probably about 10 years ago to try and manage some of my migraines. Maybe it was about 12 years ago. No, 10. Yeah, because Jet's 10. It was around the time that I had Jet. Through my pregnancy with Jet, I had... Um, just one non-stop migraine that lasted for about six months um, that severely impacted my mental health and um, my ability to stay alive and it was a horrible situation uh, and then even after his birth I continued to regularly have a lot of migraines so um, I tried the blood pressure medication and that was like the worst thing I could have ever done for myself I got very, very, very sick. So um, that was recommended. And even though I'm trying to like create this more current medical record, I did say to the doctor, no, never, ever, ever again. <laughs> that is, that's very dangerous. And you guys should have more idea on people's baseline blood pressure before you offer them a blood pressure reduction medication. <laughs> and he's like, why? And I'm like, do my blood pressure. And he's like, oh yeah, no, that's no good for you. Um, so there's that. So I won't take that, uh, but I'm now on to my third medication, which I know I've used in the past without success. Um, it used to be available in a nasal spray and they actually discontinued the nasal spray because they know it doesn't work. So they still sell it in a tablet form, but um, the, doc so this, the doctor prescribed me the nasal spray and then I went to the chemist and the chemist was like, yeah, no, we don't even, that doesn't even exist. It hasn't for years because it doesn't work. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, I've got it in tablet form so I can give it to you in tablet form. But that also doesn't, like people don't have success with this medication. So 
So I was like, well, what do I do? And he said, well, why are you taking it? And I explained to him that I'm just trying to get my medical record current so that I can use it. Um, and he said, he just said, yeah, just take two. They're not going to work for you. Next time you get a migraine, take it, record the effects and then be done with it. I said, well, what can you offer me? And he said, you need to go see a migraine specialist and get up to date treatment because this is just a waste of, you know, time. It's not going to help you. Um, but yeah, so, you know, the, it really sucks. There's, but there really isn't a lot out there. And these, like I said, these injections, um, I was invited to do a trial uh, for the injections, but you had to be in either Victoria, like Melbourne or Sydney, and you had to be available for testing for a long period of time. And I can't do that because I have to be here working, raising kids, keeping my house clean, going grocery shopping and all that sort of stuff. So um, I didn't get that opportunity to be a part of that, but um, that was about five years ago, I reckon, and those same medications now are becoming available on the PBS. So it's like, hopefully, hopefully those trials went really well and they're seeing good results with it and it might be something for the future. Currently, it's like um, something like um, 30 or $40,000 a year, <laughs> or before it goes on the PBS. It's about thirty or forty thousand dollars a year to have these injections done. So, fingers crossed, uh, I'll be eligible to have it through the PBS, and it might actually work for me if I need it. I, like I said, totally hopeful that having this hysterectomy and getting um, that right ovary out might just settle down my hormone spikes, and I'm not going to have anywhere near as many migraines or any at all. Would be freaking lovely. We'll see though. We'll see. Fingers crossed I don't have to go down that road, but given that it's my next um, health thing that I want to tackle, um, I'm going to continue to record and get my records all updated and go through all of that so that I will, when the time comes, if I need, if the time comes, I'll be good to go and not have to start from scratch. But I'm definitely working towards, um, you know, oh, bloody hell, um, better like physical health for my body. I've worked on my mental health for years and years and well, I'm not in a perfect position. I won't say that because this last week I've been depressed AF. I can't even convince myself to get out of bed and have a shower at the moment. It takes a lot of convincing. I'm just sitting around doom scrolling, doing nothing. Which really sucks, but I mean, I'm good. I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm kind of, I'm just going through the motions at the moment. Oh my goodness. Debbie. Hey Debbie. How you been? I missed you. I hope you've been well. I've been thinking about you. Oh, Renee's here too. Hi, Renee. Sorry, I've just been jabber drawing away. Um, when I first started grooming Tilly, I had a lot of trouble doing her paws because I would hold them to trim them, but she would hold my hand. She would like wrap her paws around my fingers and hold my hand, which was spreading her toes out in a funny angle, and I could not trim them nicely. I could not get a nice trim on them at all. So I had to teach her not to hold my hand. <laughs> Which is like the opposite of what you want to do. It's so sweet. It's like, oh, you're holding my hand. And then you're like, stop holding my hand. Okie dokie. Now, I did your nails on this side, but not that side. Is that right? Or is it the other way around? I miss doing nails on one side. Because I'm an idiot. I think it was the other way around. Wednesday, right? Jet has 
soccer practice today. He needs to find his equipment. Twice already I have pulled his shin guards out of Joey's mouth. Which is very frustrating. Oh, awesome, Kay. I know it's a lot, but um, good on you. It takes a lot to put your um, health on the front line of your priority list. It, it really takes a lot for some of us. I, I know a lot of people are good and they manage their health all the time. I do not. I put my health off for as long as I possibly can. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm dying. Somebody help me. Um, so it has been a really, really long time since I've focused on anything um, and so the last couple of years, I've gone back to trying to get this, you know, uh, reproductive health under control, which is awesome. We're getting there. I gave up the battle for migraines a long time ago, um, trying to get any kind of help with that because people just do not understand. These doctors have got no idea. They're like, you've got a headache, take a Panadol and go to bed. Meanwhile, I'm in like this pain and sickness and the way it makes you feel um, like it's, it is so awful. I, I shouldn't say this because it's like not good for my YouTube channel or whatever. It is so awful. I have considered taking steps to never feel anything again. It is such a horrific pain and it lasts for so long and it makes you feel so sick and so helpless. Um, it's it is it's really really I cannot even put into words how freaking horrible these migraines are but I gave up on that um, like I said about 10 years ago when I just could not get any help um, I gave up on this on my you know reproductive health when I couldn't get any help you're young you're fine you've just got a period pain it's all normal you're a woman what do you expect I've had a man say that to me before you're a woman what do you expect uh, I expect to not be in pain. I expect to not be um, bleeding so heavily that I'm now anemic and getting iron transfusions every other month. I mean, that doesn't sound normal to me. Um, so yeah, I've gone through all of that. I gave up on that, but finally getting somewhere, which is awesome. Such a relief. And I'm also tackling my um, uh, the issues with my bladder and urethra at the same time. So. Fingers crossed. I, we're actually not hopeful that the procedure I'm having for that is going to help at all. We don't think that it will. But it is like the next step to try. If anything is going to help, that is the first step. And then we go from there. Turn around. But I also gave up on that a long, long time ago. I gave up on that about... Uh, yeah, probably about 10 years ago as well. I was just like, well, nobody's going to help me. Um, at all so <laughs> I gave up on that but I did decide when I took on this battle again for uh, my uterus and ovary issues that I was not going to take no for an answer on my um, bladder issues either so that did make my fight a lot harder significantly harder but fingers crossed I get some results from that Most like women that I've talked to about um, either of the procedures that I'm having, the ovaries, the uterus, cervix, the urethra and bladder stuff, um, I've talked to a lot of people about it and almost all of them say that they had good results and they're glad they did it, they don't regret it. Some people, there's still some people that don't get uh, good results or what they were hoping for uh, or it just simply doesn't work for them. And some people, of course, have a really tough time in recovery, that, you know, or things go wrong. And of course, those people um, also don't enjoy going through that. So there is that, but I'm going to be positive. Everything's going to go well. Um, we are like 
just over, uh, just under seven weeks out. So six weeks, six days out. So of course my nerves are getting way up there and I'm struggling to focus on anything else at the moment. Oh my goodness, Kay, I know, right? Um, I have gone to the emergency room with chest pain, like really severe chest pain. Um, and I was ignored for a really, really long time. <laughs> I was ignored for a really, really long time in the waiting uh, room before anybody would even see me. Um, when I did finally get seen by a nurse, she's like, do you have anxiety? And I'm like, yeah, I've got anxiety. She's like, well, you're probably having an anxiety attack. And I'm like, yeah, so I'm really familiar with my anxiety. This is not that. This is not that. Yeah, most women say that and then they're just having an anxiety attack. I'm like, okay, well, what do you think I'm anxious about? And she's like, well, I don't know. What are you anxious about? I'm like, I'm not anxious about anything. I don't have anxiety right now. I have chest pain. Um, after a long, 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 long time, I finally got a, um, a thing where they like put all the buttons on your chest and listen to your heart. Um, and I got a blood test and they test some kind of levels to see like if you're having a heart attack or going to have a heart attack. And, uh, well, guess what? My levels were, um, quite high, not quite high. I wasn't going to immediately have a heart attack, but they were higher than they're supposed to be and my heart was not doing the things that it was supposed to do. And the nurse is like, well, sometimes when you have anxiety, your heart gets a bit confused. I'm like, what the hell? Like, just can we just treat the fact that I have chest pain? Like, get off the anxiety wheel, man. Get off. Um, and so I ended up having to stay in the hospital for ages to have more tests done. Uh, fortunately, I had, was given some medication and my, um, like five hours later, they did a test like every two hours or three hours. And the, the third test that they did came back with my levels starting to come back down again. And my heart trace thing like started to be normal again. Um, so I have genetically high cholesterol. Like it's not um, diet based and nothing I do makes it come down very much. Like, yeah, if I'm eating really healthy, it comes down a little bit. But um, I sit at about 13. I, I don't know much about these things, but my number is 13 when I'm just like in a regular routine. It's been as high as 17 and as low as nine. I, I don't ever come down from that. I think it's meant to be like three or less than three. So um, uh, even when I'm at my healthiest, exercising, dieting, doing all the right things, uh, nine was the lowest I've ever managed to get it to. And I said that to them, I said that, you know, like, uh, there is a history of genetically high cholesterol. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a worry and I'm in a lot of freaking pain. Let's take it seriously, please. Um, and they did not. Eventually the doctor's like, yeah, so you're gonna stay with us. We're gonna keep an eye on you, close eye on you. And um, so I, look, there was no actual cause found um, just over time and with the right medications, it all seemed to resolve. I had some follow-up appointments and again, nothing was found like to cause that. Um, but of course, if I have chest pain in the future, I need to go and get checked out. So that's fun. But they just, everything is anxiety. Like if I went home and ignored it, could it possibly have gone to having like something really go bad? If I was like, oh, I'm just anxious, I'll go home then and then like just drop dead. <laughs> like how horrible is that that's awful so when the first measurement they did I'd already had a dose of medicine it's so they put it under your tongue or something I'd already had a dose of that before about uh, an hour before they even took the first blood test um, so like what was the what was the original number <laughs> Fortunately, uh, most I, I do get chest pain when I have anxiety. I am very familiar with that. I know that I'm like, oh, that's anxiety. Uh, I also get um, like, yeah, muscle type pain in my chest. That's anxiety. That is anxiety. When your heart is not doing what it's supposed to do, it's a completely different feeling. And the fact that doctors just don't bloody listen to you is insane. 
And I know people go in all the time and they don't have anything wrong with them, it turns out. Oh, yeah, so you actually do have anxiety. This is not a heart problem. That's great. That's great news. That's fantastic news. That person's not at risk of dying. That's awesome. But you can't lump everybody with a vagina into the same box. You're just anxious because you're a woman. Are you on your period? Have you had a hard time keeping up with the dishwasher? Have your kids been difficult lately? No, you bloody idiot. My chest hurts. Makes me so mad. Uh, so my grandfather, he died at like 40 something, 44, 45 from a heart attack um, with no sort of known cause, but that was a long time ago. They didn't really know a lot back then. Uh, my own father, so I went to the doctors once because I was um, not feeling too good. He did a blood test. In the blood test, he included um, the cholesterol test and, um, and he called me on the phone. He's like, you need to get down here now and you need to bring your mother and your father with you. I was like, okay, are we all dying? He's like, no, but you get down here now. Drive safely, but now. So we go down and um, he's like, all right, this kid who is, you know, I, I weighed like 30 kilograms in perfect fitness and, and all that sort of stuff. I was not overweight or anything like that. He's like, she is too young to have that level of cholesterol, which means it's a genetic issue. Uh, you know, she's in good health otherwise, which means it's genetic, which means one of you two who are not in good health have very high cholesterol and you're going to have a heart attack and drop dead. So let's go, blood tests now. And he sent them for blood tests. <laughs> he sent them for blood tests then and there and he did not let us go home until the results came back. They were put in as urgent. Um, and when the results came back, it was my dad and his cholesterol was at like 20 something, 27. It was phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. So my dad went on to have further testing done. He started a um, medication to help manage his cholesterol. And uh, he was pretty like reasonably fit and healthy at the time as well. Um, so, you know, he, but he started to have more of a focus on his fitness and lifestyle and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, he was like, the doctor was like, I don't even know how you're alive right now. This is ridiculous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a thing. If, if you have family members with like high cholesterol, it can be passed on. <laughs> I didn't even know that. So I saved my dad's life. I remind him of that all the time when he's like being a pain in the butt. Just remember, I saved your life, mate. <laughs> hilarious um but yeah you know you tell the doctors and they're just like no you're just a little anxious love you need to go to a spa and get a massage that'll fix everything no it won't no it won't it won't fix anything do you know what will fix something medicine and science how about we use those today I have literally never gone to the hospital because I have anxiety. When I have anxiety, I climb into my bed. I crawl up into a little ball and I hide away from the world. And if somebody talks to me, I yell at them, get out. And I stay there in my little cocoon of don't talk to me. Don't look at me, don't breathe in my space. In fact, just don't even exist right now. Please leave me alone, I am not available. That's what I do when I have anxiety. Sometimes when I have anxiety, I check that all the doors are locked and the oven's turned off and the dishwasher's not running and nothing's on fire. But I never go, oh, I'm anxious, let's go to the hospital. <laughs> Where there's lots of people and machines and noises and things are scary and overwhelming. Yeah, let's go do that. <laughs> Horrible. Yeah, many things are genetic. It's crazy, right? Oh my goodness. I'm so glad the doctor did that. Um, Cause I was like 12, 13 maybe. Very young. Oh, very, very young. Um, it was crazy. And uh, we had no idea. We didn't really even have that much information on how my dad's father passed away. Uh, just that it was a suspected heart attack and that's it. Um, so now we know that he most likely had, you know, very high cholesterol that wasn't managed. 
and it was likely a genetic link on his end too. Um, and so I've had, um, all of my kids have had their cholesterol tested. I don't think any of them had anything crazy. That was a long time ago though. So um, Jamie's has been tested and his is okay. The other kids have not been recently tested though. Please put your tongue away. Don't put your tongue out. Here, sit down. Good girl. You're going to sit nicely on the table. Don't be silly. Yeah, if like when you're first starting to have symptoms of anxiety, it can be really confusing. But if you've had anxiety for years and years, you get the hang of it. You're like, oh yeah, look at that, an anxiety attack. Uh, well, I did anyway, and a lot of people do. Not everybody does. And do you know what? If you feel like you need to go to the hospital, go to the hospital. Go, go do, go get the treatment that you need. Absolutely. Uh, but a lot of long-term, long-time anxiety people, um, we get the hang of it and we're just like, not again. And yes, if you do have chest pain, Stephanie, and you know it's not, or you, you're not sure what it is, go, go get checked out every time. Chest pain is very, very serious. I have most of my anxiety attacks when I'm doing my grocery shopping. Or driving. Whenever I drive the car, I always have anxiety. But when I'm grocery shopping, I have like the more serious anxiety attacks. Which is why I always take one of the kids. I don't take Dale. I do not like grocery shopping with Dale. Um, I find it extremely stressful. And because I'm already anxious, it, it just doesn't go well. I don't enjoy it. If we're getting a couple of things, then I love it. I love going shopping with him. But if I'm doing my weekly grocery shop, no, you can stay at home, leave me alone. So I take two of the kids and um, uh, Jamie in particular, he's, he's gotten really good at helping with my anxiety. He knows, he has anxiety himself. So he recognizes my signs for does not have anxiety. Um, and he just doesn't understand those sorts of things. Um, but Jamie has started like it's not even something we've really discussed but i've just noticed recently that he's just kind of like taken on this role when i am if you can see that i'm getting very anxious and i'm starting to head towards having an anxiety attack he kind of stands in front of me and like blocks my view of everything and everyone's view of me and he talks to me about things and gets my mind distracted and I don't know if he is doing it intentionally or if it's kind of like just a thing that occurs to him that he should do. But he, yeah, it's really, really helping. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm like, hang on, we just got to stop for a minute because I'm freaking out. Um, and he just like, he just, every time he just kind of like stands in front of me and it gives me a minute to calm down. So, so, so helpful. Oop, mind your chompers. Uh, I find that really, really helpful. And he'll say to me, are you all right? I go, yeah, why? He goes, you're not breathing. <laughs> you need to take some deep breaths. I'm like, oh, yeah, you should probably do that. Can you put your head up for me, please, lovey? you got the world's fluffiest, flippy, fluffy neck, and I don't want to get a quarter in my flippers. No, ma'am. All right, I'm gonna get right underneath. Sit, 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 sit. We have made good time today. Up, 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 right up. You can do it.
He's definitely matured quite a lot. Definitely, he's doing really well. Um, we're still, you know, we still have our moments uh, and he's got a long way to go. Um, but, you know, I'm proud of him and he's really coming into his own. Definitely gonna say the kid is autistic. Like, we are doing like a long-term assessment. So no official diagnosis, but I'm pretty like set on that he is definitely autistic, but of course very high functioning. Um, but so he's juggling a lot of his own things that he has to work on. But like depression wise, he sat on my bed yesterday. So two days ago, he I got home from work. This is on like Monday. I got home from work, Dale was at band practice. It was already about 7.30 by the time I was done and inside. Dale was at band practice, I had to cook dinner. Um, we needed to go to the store and it, I was just like so freaking overwhelmed. We did that, we went to the store and I took um, jo uh, Jordan and Jamie with me um, and left Jet and Abby. I was only gone for a short time, they were okay. Um, but Jordan and Jamie were just like in a mood and they were um, at each other just me, 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 me. And it just like absolutely, I just could not even cope with it. We went and got the things that we went to go for. The reason I was going to the store is because Jamie wanted some um, fish. He didn't want to eat what I was going to cook, which is fine. Um, he wanted some fish. I was going to go get him some fish. The fish that they had was like so, so, so expensive. So I said, no, we're not going to get that. Um, we'll go to a different store that has the same kind of thing, but much, much cheaper, which is where we normally get it from. And so I drove over to that other store and they were closed already. So we missed it. And then he got angry at me like, we should have left earlier. And I was like, dude, I like, I'm still in my hairy work clothes. I, I had... I just finished work, like, you know, there's not really anything I can do about it. He'd come out earlier in the day to ask me if I could go to the store, that was why. <sighs> so we didn't end up getting what he wanted, and then he was just in such a mood. Um, he eventually got over it, I came home, cooked dinner. The kids had dinner at like 9 o'clock at night, which was freaking way too late, and I was so frustrated and stressed out. Um, I ended up just going to bed. And I got the other kid, the little ones sorted and all that sort of stuff. And I just went to bed. And then Jamie got over it and he just wanted to talk. Talk, 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 talk. Blah, 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 blah. If you've had an autistic person in your life, they pick a subject and then bam, you've got to hear everything about it. And like most of the time I can be pretty tolerant of that. Um, but because I was just like so struggling with my depression and then I had a lot of anxiety because we'd gone to the store and the kids were being difficult. I just didn't want to talk and I just said to him, I just I just want to be left alone. Like I get it, but I just want to be left alone. I'm drained that I've got nothing to offer you right now and you're talking and you're talking at me and it's just bang bang. Like I just need to have a quiet minute. And he got really offended by that, understandably. Um, really really offended by it who was like how dare you uh, and he stormed off and was very upset with me um which really really sucked because I, I didn't mean to upset him but i was just so overwhelmed and i'd like hinted gently like okay cool well i'm gonna go to bed now and um okay i'm gonna have some quiet time because i have to go to bed soon i just want to watch this show on tv and just relax for a little while and then he'd keep talking and talking and so i got to the point where i just had like a little snap Naughty mummy, hang on a sec. Oh, that didn't work, did it? So I just had like a little mummy snap where I was just like so done with listening to everything. Um, I normally book two hours for Tilly because uh, that's what I charge, but I blocked out extra time. So we are finishing up a bit early and I've gone pretty cruisy with the groom today. Um, hang on a sec. Yeah, so I had like just a little mummy snap where I was just like, just go and leave me alone. I just, I don't want to talk right now. Um, I wasn't mean, but I just needed life. My brain was done. Uh, so he's a bit upset with me over that, but 
Uh, I did later on, I just went and said to him, look, I'm just not doing that well right now. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to snap at you. And he was not up for it. He was just like, whatever, whatever. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I let it be. Last night he came and sat on my bed and he's like, are you okay? And I said, nah, man, my depression's like just getting the better of me. My anxiety's getting the better of me. And I'm just really overwhelmed. And he's like, yeah, I can tell. And I was like, I know. And I'm trying not to take it out on anybody, but you know, that's really hard. And so then we ended up talking and he said, he said, yeah, well, you know, recently I've just like come out of a depression and I know it's hard, but you'll be okay. And I was like, and I know that he's, he's also has depression and anxiety. Um, and I was like, Oh, I was so proud because he was able to articulate, you know, recognize that he was in a depression and talk about coming out of a depression. Like how awesome is that? Um, and so it's like, you know, oh, is there anything that you, you know, we can do to help you and stuff like that? Not really. I just need to get through this episode and I will be fine. Um, but yeah, sometimes life is hard, but talking about it is, makes it a lot easier. Uh, Dotty K. Hi Dotty, by the way. Um, that's crazy, uh, but how awesome. How awesome. So third year of university. That's crazy. And yes, autistic children can be very high functioning. And um, in female, uh, biologically female children especially, it can be very hard to diagnose. Most are diagnosed in, in their um, adult life or late teens between 14 and 18 um, it's a lot of diagnosis and then women who are in their 30s so they've got children their child is diagnosed with autism and it comes about where they're like oh my god i'm autistic uh, and then they go through assessment and find out yeah you're actually autistic uh, in their 30s so that happens a lot too interesting very very interesting but women tend to be or females tend to be uh, very good at masking, 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 masking. Both Jet and Jamie are very good maskers, um, and me, uh, but also just um, typically have a different presentation than what boy children do. Same with ADHD. Um, in my experience, I'm not a medical professional. This is just my personal opinion and experience. I'm gonna get Tilly home to her mum. Give me a sec, I'm gonna put her harness and everything on and get her ready and send mum a message to let her know she's ready to go. Uh, she's got like tags on her harness, so I won't be a sec, guys. Uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cold. <laughs> Take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> it's windy and it's cold. Um, I can't see the children because my swing that I chose it's to get on is way. facing the wrong way. This swing is Jets for, over there. Um, children with disabilities. Able to unable people. Um, and I probably shouldn't be using it, but You're if, fine. if anybody else I wants it, I would get off. I couldn't fit. My butt wouldn't fit between here and here. I just saw a relatively comfortable looking seat that I could sit on and swing, so I went for this one. They're all the same. I can't swing on this because it squeezes my butt. This one squeezes my butt. Quite a lot. <laughs> they should make adult swing. Oh, hang on. They have those. <laughs> they do, and they just only just get missed, but they just they continue to do it. And eventually, like you hit one, I just kicked you with my leg. <laughs> Have you ever seen a kid go actual flying? Yeah. Oh. When it's not your kid, it doesn't, doesn't matter. When it's your kid, you feel a little bit bad, but when it's not your nah, kid... Nah, that's like how, how you learn lessons on the playground. Yeah, you've got to learn. That's You'll the learn hard the way. the hard way, unfortunately. But that's also a parenting thing, too. No, because as a parent, you say, don't walk in front of the swings, you're going to get knocked over. And when they're little, you chase them, you get them, and you pull them away from the swings. 
Okay, and eventually, so after like maybe a hundred times of stopping them from doing that thing, you go, all right, mate, if you're going to keep doing it, you're going to learn the hard way. Yeah, but And then so, you watch your kid get knocked over. All right, so as a first kid, oh, yeah. first parent, first kid, they don't think of saying that. Is that your daughter? But the second kid... They preempt it. They say it before it occurs. Oh, yeah. So you the, know, the first kid, you learn all the stuff that you need to preempt. By the time I became a mother, I'd already been involved in the child yeah, rearing yeah, so. of many, many children. So um, I was already all over it. I was just like, hey, idiot, if you walk in front of that swing. Yeah, but then so were my, my parents. My parents were involved with lots of children when I was young. Yeah. But now... Are they saying they let Eve <laughs> walk in front of kids on No, I'm, I'm saying now... <laughs> Yes. Old people forget, don't they? Oh, yeah. Probably. I'll be a grandma one day and I'll be like, listen here, little sonny. Old people totally forget how to look after babies. If you walk in front of the swing, you get knocked over. Not really. I'll be like, wait, if you walk in front of that swing, you're going to get kicked. Well, grandma was going to give a naughty kid a Buzz Lightyear (laughs) yesterday. So that was like... A child that was having an absolute temper tantrum and grandma wanted to give him his Christmas present early to help him feel better. (laughs) That's dad, not how it It doesn't work. work. And his dad was like, you can't reward him for bad behavior. Exactly. That's. I was really proud to see him, like, not that I can be proud of another person, adult, but I thought it was really good that he, like, that he stops that. it, everything in motion. And I was thinking it, I just didn't say it. We were all thinking it, we just didn't say it. <laughs> yep, you're screaming like a maniac and hitting and kicking everything. And then Here's Grandma comes in with, here's a present. <laughs> Here's a buzz light here for you. You need a warm up, you do it. You guys can see the kookaburra. He's sitting on this bar here. Come on. <laughs> so in case you guys are wondering, we don't see kookaburras very often. But they eat snakes. Hey little fella. You wanna have a bath and blow dry? <laughs> Oh, you're so beautiful. Look at the blue on the side. You're a pretty fella. Now, can you come and watch me? This has actually failed. Oh, yeah, go on. No, definitely not. No, go on. No, no. Go, go, go. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, pop up. All right, Abby, just that wait that for mum to have a turn. No, no. I'm just going to make it go a little bit. No. And get it going. No, no, no. I just plan to walk very slowly. I'm a lazy hamster and I don't. No, I'm not lazy not hamster. <laughs> Okay, lazy hamster. Get off. Let, I'll show you how it's done. Your crocs aren't meant for that. These crocs are made for walking. That's just what they'll do. <laughs> One of these days, these crocs are gonna walk all over you. What's your tongue doing, buddy? Go on. You gonna fall on your face? Yeah, it feels like
Whoa, nearly bottomed out. He's got a blue cape on. <laughs> so close to the bottom. Jordan's going to help you. Go down the slide. Go down the slide. Go down the slide. Oh dear. Go down the slide. She, she can't go over the hole. So go, go around the, the hole. I feel like it's going to break. Abby, Abby, it's fine. It's fine. Break. It won't even break with Jordan in there. you got to go Look around the, the hole. hole. You climbed all the way up there. Abby. Look at Jordan. Stop. Calm down and take a deep breath. And look what other people are doing. Okay, ready for the smiley face once she gets down. Last time you went down, you just screamed. Ah, uh, so there's the smiley face. <laughs> Whoa. Coast to ride, hands up in the sky, take you on a ride, love to feel the high, we can start again, laughing to the end, screaming at the top, hoping never stops, we could do it all over, Dream is bringing us closer, superstar you like Nova, oh, so incredible one time, gotta let it go tonight, wanna know what it feels like, yeah. beautiful fur family thank you so much for watching I'm gonna give you a big old list of things to do if you enjoy this video give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and the bell if you want notifications for every time we post a video if you think this video is worth sharing hit that share button and share it with all of your friends wherever you are and whatever you're doing I hope you're having a fantastic time of day and we look forward to seeing you again real soon
not doing that again. The dog. <laughs> <laughs> You're recording. One, Go. two, three, oh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Here we come. What do you know? You want to go together? Uh, I'll split up. I'll go to the playground and you go first. I was going to try staying here. I was going to stay here like this. That was so easy. The first thing I did was look over there. And then like this. Okay, I'm back. I have Chino. Oh, you still got your collar on. Come here. I put him down for a minute because I really needed a drink. And he just peed on my stuff here. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Let me just clean this up real quick. Oh my goodness. You're a rough bag. Well, at least we know you don't need to go to the toilet now, do ya? banging and clanging. Well, I would be grooming you right now if you didn't pee on stuff. Unfortunately, most of it went on the floor. Oh, 
too cute to be in trouble aren't you? Way too cute. Sorry guys, I won't be a sec. Kimber, can you have a groom now? So this is Chino. Good Bean, how you doing? I hope you keep them well. Having fun with your doggies? Oh, I can't remember your Corgi's name, but you've got a Corgi, right? Corgi? Yeah. Or a couple of Corgis. Hope they're well. Come here, rat bag. Come on. Come on. Snuggle muffin, huh? Here's a little snuggle muffin. So last time I had to shave him pretty short because he was um, a bit matted. Yeah, you got two? Oh, yeah, Starbuck, that's right. I remember. He'd be all grown up now. Um, yeah, last time I had to shave him pretty short, so mum would like to keep him a bit longer. She, she actually really likes the length that he is now. Um, and in the past, he has had a good full coat. Hang on, hang on. Um, but yeah, he just got matted along the way. So we shaved him all off, started fresh. So we're not actually going to take much length off him today. What we're going to do is um, get him washed and dried and then have a look at something that is a length that is very similar to what he is now and just take off a small amount because it's good to have a cut and tidy um, but we, do, we just don't want to lose too much of that length so that's what we're going to do we're still going to give him a full cut sit 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 good boy uh, we're still going to give him a full cut but it's really not going to make much difference to him <laughs> a good tidy up and just get this all one length and looking good now I have to clean the tub. Now I have to clean the tub. And Audi, that's right, Audi's the other one. Oh, I just got neutered. Not the Christmas ball balls. How's he doing? Hopefully a nice quick recovery for him. Tilly's mum is happy with her groom. She's gone home. 
She's going out the door. Tilly gets a bit reactive to my cat. Well, not reactive, but very excited. And my cat, of course, likes to sit out the front to say hello to all the doggies because she loves dogs. Um, but at the same time, um, Chino arrived at the same time until his mum was going out. So that's a little bit of chaos. She didn't know what to get excited about, Chino or the cat. I got to Saturday to be kept quiet. Hard work with some doggy. <laughs> Are you happy? Are you happy? My mum said she has been for a big walk and she's been to the dog park today. So no doubt he will be nice and tired after he gets his room done. He's going to be all pooped. All pooped out. Are you happy boy? Gino, are you happy boy? Cats are very good at hiding um, pain and discomfort, Stephanie. They're actually incredible. Sounds like a lucky boy, good bean. just be a quick minute and then we'll get Chino in the bath. Hang on buddy. Good hide and Jordan ruined it. You would have been found anyway. She came from Okay Abby this is called pie face. Okay so what you gotta do is put your face in there. Mm -hmm. Alright and then you put whipped cream on here. Yeah. All right, now you've got to turn that until it goes off. Go on. Okay. Put your face in there, chin on there, and keep Will turning. Will it hurt me? No. Yeah, keep going. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you play. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's this for? Yummy. What are you working that for? Can we play again? Yeah, we can play again. You want to do it again? Four rounds. Four rounds. Now it's your turn. Oh, You're going to get part of it. No, that was the, that's how you play the game. You know. That's your fa that It's your turn now. Okay. You get extra whipped cream. Wait, wait. Okay. Ready? I have my turn. Okay. Two. Oh. <laughs> even when I tried to cheat, even when I tried to cheat, it's <laughs> oh. Is that it? Do you want to play again? <laughs> Do we have to leave the cream on our face? Mm -hmm. Give me cream. You're better at this game than your mother is. Yeah. 
Did she get scared? Okay, you ready? <laughs> I just added more. <laughs> oh! Okay, ready again? Don't touch it. Don't touch that. Can mum see it? My mum. <laughs> Okay, let's put our little teeny boy in the bath. Is there a lead over there? There's not. Let me grab a lead. Here we go. Hopefully I don't need my hammock because that's in the wash now, thanks to you. Uh, my mum just got her cat de recently and <laughs> she said there was not a chance of keeping her still. But she seemed to recover nice and quick. Thank goodness, a female cat too. It's a bigger procedure for the girls. Um, sorry for the extra break today, guys. I'm really struggling quite a bit with my pain today, so there'll be a few extra breaks. I will try and keep them short. Just a minute to have a breather and do some stretching and try to wriggle out some of this pain. Fortunately, it's definitely not as bad as I've had it sometimes, which is good. Ah, uh, good thing said, how's Drew? Drew's good. He's a happy boy. Happy little bit, you might. He's a big snuggly baby. Although he's smelly right now, all three of my dogs are smelly. They're all having a bath on the weekend. And Drew's pretty hairy, so he's going to have a full groom. Well, I'll see. We'll see how he goes. If it's not too long, I might leave it closer to my surgery day. Um, it's going to be like in the cold weather, which kind of sucks for them, but they're all getting short haircuts. Because I won't be able to do any grooming for six weeks. And I can't leave them for six weeks with long hair because that would be a disaster. So um, I might just leave them. I, I might just do their sanitaries and tidy up their faces and stuff. And then do their full grooms in about six weeks time. So I'm going to do, I'm thinking of doing all of their grooms on the day before my surgery. I've got that day booked off so that I can get everything ready to go, so that I don't have anything to worry about. Um, and I might do all three dogs then. And I'm thinking maybe I might do a little live stream. I don't know. I'm decided. We'll see how I'm feeling. Uh, I'm definitely going to be very anxious and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking about. If you guys want to watch me just groom my own dogs. <laughs> hey Alex, how are ya? Uh, the dogs are inside, so they're fine um, when it comes to cold weather. 
They go out for the loo. Sometimes they hang out outside if it's a nice day, but they certainly have access to the inside and warm. And of course, an Australian winter is nothing like um, an American winter. No snow. Nothing crazy. You get some cold nights, but they're all inside overnight. So I think they'll be okay. I'll definitely, if I'm up to it, I'll definitely pop on a stream for you guys. So they all need to be done. So I might as well do them all at once. we bring it home a new doggy but not a new cat there's no good with other cats okie dokes what time is it 12 o'clock so he's going to soak for it should be five minutes it's de-shedding shampoo which is, has a five minute soaking time Give him roughly five minutes. I'm just going to get the table ready and his towel. Our last doggy of the day is a German Shepherd, I think. Oh, is my stream frozen? Uh, mine's still running, but give it a minute. We'll see what happens. Yes, our last doggy is going to be a German Shepherd, a big baby who carries on like a pork chop.
couple more minutes, buddy. You're doing good. Are you gonna up and running? Yeah, mine didn't freeze up at all. Might have been your internet. Our internet's been a bit funny lately. Again. Sometimes it's good for ages and then bam, out of nowhere it just gets very glitchy. Okie dokie, mister. We'll go one more minute. You're doing great. just very quickly doing some work on my little computer that I should have done a while ago but didn't get around to. Since he's sitting and being such a good boy, um, just a reminder it is not um, very cold in here. I keep it a good comfortable temperature the doggies so he is okay sitting there and um, it is the type of shampoo that we're using calls for a five minute soaking time to let it do its thing Okie dokie, let's do it! Alright, the weather. Have you got storm today, Hannah? So I don't think I said hello to you, hi Hannah. He's been so good, he is. He's a very good boy. So I used to be shedding shampoo on my like doodle type dogs because it, some of them, a lot of them, most of them, do have some kind of shedding in their coat. They have a mostly have a mixed coat and um, there is some shedding but it really helps to just separate all those hairs if there is going to be any matting um, it makes a pretty big difference to um, brushing out blow drying and brushing out seems to just be a lot easier it just separates all those hairs and gets everything moving much easier in my opinion other people could have a different opinion. I find it works for me because that's what I do. Um, I also use deep shedding shampoo on poodle coats as well. Unless of course it's a dog with like skin sensitivities then I'll use a more gentle shampoo. Alright, let's rinse you 
rock buddy boy. Shepherd's week. I did a German Shepherd last night too, Mrs. Jemma. You guys remember Jemma? That's got the sore back. Um, I was able to brush her tail out completely yesterday, which is really awesome. She let me brush her bum and her tail, which is a first, which sounds crazy. Um, but, because I've been grooming her for a long while now, but that's the first time I've been able to fully brush out her bum and tail. There was so much hair that came out uh, in the bath because she was letting me like touch her in the bath as well, which is unusual. She doesn't normally let me, but she was very comfortable with me touching her. Um, the amount of hair came out it actually blocked the bathtub, the drain, completely. It took me like 20 minutes to get the bloody drain unblocked. a crazy large amount of hair. Uh, so that's cool. Maybe she was just having a good day with her pain. Maybe um, we build up more trust and she gives me a bit more trust to do it. Who knows? But she was having a good day, so um, I definitely took advantage of that. She's a short haired German Shepherd, so even though she get, does get compacted, she doesn't get badly matted. Um, and her mum is able to do some brushing regularly, so she doesn't get like that much, not like a dangerously uncomfortable build up of hair. And the bath, the deep shedding bath that I do, gets a good amount of hair out, but not all of it. So um, it's not a problem, but to be able to do a full, really decent groom, it wasn't a full groom. There's still faces I can't touch. Uh, like under her tummy here, she's no good with that. Too sensitive. Um, but yeah, to get her tail and her bum and legs, back legs brushed out was awesome. Uh, and her chest and like right under her chin area, she's not too good with that either, usually, but we got in there as well, so um, she was definitely just having a really good day with her pain, I reckon. I dare say the next groom I do will not be the same. With um, dogs that have known pain. I definitely experienced uh, some days being a really good day and other days just not that good. Who's joined us? Paula. Hi Paula and Lucky Lama. Hello. I'm doing all right, Lucky Lama. I've got my, um, I can't remember the stupid name. It's a stupid German name, no offense, German. I just don't have the tongue for speaking German. I have uh, my ovulation pain today on my right ovary, which is giving me some grief, but we've only got three dogs today, so I'm just gonna power through. And then, um, Hopefully by the time I finish, it might have eased up a bit. I can definitely tell that uh, I've had a, um, an ovarian cyst burst. I can definitely tell that and it's not a very nice feeling. But I've got a lot of pressure in there still and a lot of pain. So. And at least one of them has burst. Um, sounds awful but it's giving me a bit of relief but I might need to go get some antibiotics because I'm likely to end up with an infection so that sucks but I can do that later not a big rush for that Well, 
Yeah, I'll definitely be resting later. Oh, can you cut it out, please? Thank you. Let's give you face wash, please. You don't want all that shampoo being left behind. Can you be in a wrap bag. So I have an ongoing uh, prescription for antibiotics. I don't need to go to the doctor. I can just get a prescription pill and take a course of antibiotics. If it's, I feel like I'm becoming sick with fevers, chills, generally feeling unwell, any of that sort of stuff, of course I'll go to the doctor. Um, but because this is such a frequent occurrence and I know my body, um, my doctors have given me an ongoing prescription um, with, of course, the decision has to be made. If I take antibiotics and I am not getting better, this goes for my UTIs as well. Um, if I am not getting better or I feel unwell at all, then there's a possibility I don't have the correct antibiotic and I will need to go and be assessed properly by the doctor. So, uh, But most of the time, I'm on a broad spectrum antibiotic and most of the time it takes care of everything. So... Um, yeah, it just that's that's the way it is. Uh, Jackie, 11 p.m. off to bed. It was so good to see you, Jackie. Please take care of yourself. Uh, definitely take care of yourself and have a lovely sleep. Hopefully, we'll get to see you on Monday for our next live stream. My Monday would be your Sunday night, right? I think so. Yeah, uh, keep an eye out for us. And thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Come here, right bag. All right. Yeah. Oh my goodness, he's a big boy. Oh, you can fall off the table. You're wild. Hang on a minute. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. One wild teddy bear. Oh yeah, drive safe tomorrow, okay? Be very careful. Uh, I always say to my kids, not that any of them drive yet, but they will soon. Um, like, you can be as careful as you want to be, but you're only as safe as the idiot next to you. <laughs> That's what I always say. And in storms or weather events and stuff like that, there's always going to be at least one bloody idiot on the road. So um, take every precaution and be very aware of what's happening around you. very excited although we don't get to do after bath zoomies here okay which I'm really sorry about I would love to let you have after bath zoomies but I just got you nice and clean so you can't go make yourself nice and dirty again it's not the way it works it's not allowed head in thank you wow that was like a aggressive putting his head in there <laughs> oh I can't lean forwards that much you gotta come back a bit come here We got too much lean here. There we go. There we go. Oh, lucky llama. Yep. A little bit of rain all of a sudden. Sally's going 20 under the speed limit. Meanwhile, the other idiot's going 40 over the speed limit because they want to get home faster. Some morons driving on the wrong side of the road because apparently they can't see when it's wet. And then you're there just like, hello, can we just drive like we drive despite the weather? In the winter time, we get fog here. We get a lot of really heavy fog. And people just don't know what bloody fog lights are. Use your fog lights, you idiots. Um, I used to drive to work at 5.30, 5.45 in the morning through a um, serious fog area. Very, very heavy fog. You can't see 30 centimetres in front of you. The only thing you can see 
is the red fog light on the back of the car and the white fog light on the front of the car and you can only just see it like as it's getting to maybe a couple a meter a meter and a half away from you and there is forever idiots that have their they put their high beam lights on high beams instead of fog lights just put your fog lights on your freaking morons oh. Anyways, I had many a close call with somebody driving on the wrong side of the road because they couldn't see. Fair enough, nobody can see. But if they didn't have their high beams on, I wouldn't have been blinded and I might have seen them. <laughs> I might have seen them, but no, they had their high beams on, which lights up all of the fog, but not the road. And um, it makes it so that oncoming traffic cannot see you and you can't see anything except for the bright fog in front of you. People are so freaking stupid what are you being silly for oh my goodness oh my goodness you have to get brushed out buddy it's the facts of life soz you got some mats in your tail a different brush that one's not cutting it There was a um, fatal car accident locally to us last night or the night before. No, this morning. Yesterday morning, I think it was. Um, they haven't shared the full details, but um, an elderly gentleman lost his life hitting a van that had five people in it and the van rolled. So everybody was injured and an elderly gentleman lost his life, which is just so terribly sad. Uh, the road toll on country roads is absolutely horrific, it's disgusting. Um, but we all like to blame young people, young people being idiots on the road. And yes, there are so many young people that are in high speed accidents on country roads. Because yeah, there's very few cops around the place and you can floor it, you can go as fast as you want. Um, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. And usually the younger you are, the less driving experience you have and the less equipped you are to handle your vehicle at high speed. So, young people, they do account for quite a bit on the, on, of the road toll, but it is, there's a high percentage of elderly people on country roads that either get tired, distracted, or, you know, they just do something really bloody stupid because older people tend to be quite entitled. They just think, well, if I go, there's nothing you can do about it. Meanwhile, they get taken out by a semi-trailer. Because, hello, you, the semi-trailer cannot stop, as entitled as you feel. If you go in front of a semi-trailer that's doing 110 kilometers on a highway, you're going to die. They're not going to stop because you're old and you think you have right of way. <laughs> so that happens quite a lot. The road toll on country roads is awful. And um, unfortunately, a high percentage of it is elderly drivers who just do stupid things. Stupid, stupid things. I get stuck behind people. Every time I drive into the town next to us, I get stuck behind some idiot that's swerving all over the road and I say to the kids, look at this bloody moron on their phone. They're distracted on their phone. The car goes this way and then they rip it back and then it goes this way and they rip it back and I think, yeah, they're on their phones. I get to an overtaking lane and I go up beside them and I look and it is like some 80, 90 year old driver. Like, what are you doing? You're old enough to know better. It's insane. It blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind. If you have an old person in your life, please go for a drive with them and see how well they're doing. And if they're not doing well, please take steps to assist them getting where they need to go and getting their license taken off them because they will take themselves out and possibly other people while they're at it. And I know it sucks to lose your independence and freedom, but there comes a time when it just has to happen. As sad as it is and awful as it is, there comes a time when it just has to happen for their own safety and then everyone else around them. It, it sucks, but that's the way it is. And on that note, here's some music and blow drying.
didn't think I'd go this fast. Goodbye to this house we thought would always last. And this is where Dad's garden goes. Summer haze, my reading place, and they not tiptoe.
sing, we dance, we fight, and we love. The small things that we do, sharing a word or two, telling a story to a new friend. Okay, you're looking good. You're looking good. I had to get these ears nice and dry. Um, There's quite a bit of matting in there, which is all sorted now. Thank goodness. I'm just gonna grab a drink and then we'll get to getting his haircut done. Um, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> what? She threw it at you. Good blush for me. <laughs> On the floor. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> don't put cream everywhere. I don't want to clean it up. <laughs> don't you dare. Do not. I don't. I don't want to clean it. No. 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 That is. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Children, clean I've it in I've felt that go enough. past no, my ear. No, enough now. It's going everywhere. Alright, alright. It's going everywhere. Oh, God. Being a responsible parent, I see. Look at the kid. Can you press it? <laughs> he went in there. <laughs> I'm going to tell my friends about this. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Well, now that mum's come back, my face is so red. That's enough of that, isn't it, my love? No, one more yeah. round. No, no, we're done. We are done. Let me see your face. Ah! Oh. Oh. Do it to me. <laughs> right. You got That's no one. more fun. No more fun. What about me? No more fun. <laughs> Good day. Bye. I think I won, didn't I? No, you didn't. You didn't win anything. You won the. I was really good at all of those. The games. pie face Please. game. Oh, don't put more cream on me. Oh, I've got, <laughs> I've got a terrible idea. Stop rubbing it in your hair. Oh. Yeah, you hate the towel. You really need the towel compared to everybody else. <laughs> it was clean and. Ah! Oh, oh, no. Okay, thank you. That's just clean. Right. Just clean your face. <laughs> Right. It was clean in here when I yeah. left. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye, what's up, guys? Oh, no. That is it. One clean hot diggity dog. Hot diggity dog! All right, I'll try not to rev you up again. I get excited sometimes. So, yeah, I'm very concerned about how he's going to go with the blow dry. So we are going to towel dry the absolute floof out of this dog. Leave him there for a second and get the table ready. Bring you guys over here. Whoop. Rocking and swaying everywhere. It's gonna be wild. Come here, buddy. So again, when I pick him up, I'm trying my best to support him um, so that his back is not being compromised. Mm -hmm. oh, oh my God. Dash hands are really freaking strong too. Like they can pull a lot. So my kids can't walk, Alice. Yeah, stop pulling, mate. Um, we have a standard long haired dash hound, Alice, and the kids can't walk her because she's too strong. She just drags them. If she wants to go for something, she'll get it. Yeah, calm down. Calm down. So what we're gonna blah, blah, blah. keep your tongue in your own mouth. Yes, you're on a leash. You can't pull. Um, what we're gonna do is towel dry as much dog as we can catch. Oh my god! Stop it! Oh, you got your foot stuck in that one. Oh, look. oh in the face! Oh my word! If nothing else, you'll get some entertainment out of me <laughs> struggling to hold this dog still. Stop. 
No, get down. Get down. I will give you a cuddle. All right, there we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. I will give you lots of cuddles when you're clean and dry. Oh, in the ear. Okie dokes. Good morning, mister. All right, so he did take a while to blow dry, which I kind of suspected he would. He doesn't have very tight curls, so he doesn't have um, a lot of length there. He didn't get much longer after his bath and blow dry, um, which doesn't really surprise me, but he just has a lot of hair. Like it's a thick coat. This is a very thick coat. Yeah, you have to get brushed out. Sorry, bud. He's not a big fan of the brush. I'm using a very gentle brush. And then we'll go through with the comb. I find a lot of these dogs, they just don't like a rough brush um, with like stiff pins, sharp pins. They just don't like it. But a gentle brush and then if you go in with the comb afterwards is fine. You find you can find a combination that works if you've got a dog that just really doesn't love to be brushed. Try a few things, try a much softer brush but so long as when you go in with your comb it goes right down to the skin all the way through then you're on a winning path that is dead hair that's all shedded dead hair so um, definitely a shedding boy and i'm glad i used that de-shedding shampoo for him um, as i said the blow dryer like if you let them soak it'll separate any potential small tangles and knots and it'll bring out all that dead hair as well. Yeah, he's a Cavoodle, Cavalier Poodle mix. You're quite a big fella though, so I would suspect he's either been bred with a line of quite large Cavaliers or a miniature Poodle, um, as a guess, because he is quite a big boy. But if I had to have a, a all the way guess, I would guess quite a large line of Cavaliers. Some Cavaliers are huge. They're just very tall and big and heavy, and others are smaller. I don't know why, I don't know the difference. I've never bothered to look into it or educate myself on it. It's just an observation, um, which I find interesting. So when people get these cavoodle dogs and their puppies are like this big, they're like, they're gonna be such a small dog. And then you get a dog that weighs like 10 kilos, 12 kilos, and is quite large in size. This dog probably weighs about, I don't know, eight kilos. Um, and he's definitely on the bigger side of the Cavalier or Cavoodle puppies that I see. But you just don't know what you're gonna get unless you um, have that history uh, of both the parents and know sort of what sizes come in the like previous four generations or so, four or five generations I think it is. Um, you kind of just get what you get and sometimes they're huge and a lot bigger than people realised they were going to be. You see a lot of small um, cavoodles. Joey's quite small, even though he's a stocky boy, he's still a very small dog. Um, his mum is very small. She's a Cavalier Toy Poodle mix. Um, and yeah, his mum's really quite small, but she does not come from a small line of Cavaliers or cavoodles. They, um, she just, she's very small. Um, because there were some issues early on with her feeding, so she's, we think, smaller for that reason. Hey, yeah, smaller for that reason, um, rather than genetically small. Where are we going here? Do we have to do that? Sorry, let me try the other brush. So this is what Jude does. He hates having his front legs brushed. This is why I don't spend that much time doing fancy grooms on him anymore because he just doesn't like to have his front legs brushed. I still groom him. He still gets groomed and he still gets brushed, but he carries on like a pork chop about it, um, which obviously I don't put up with. I just ignore it and brush his legs anyway, but he doesn't enjoy it. So that's why I don't, you know, do many fancy cuts on him anymore. I keep him pretty simple and happy and, co and comfortable. Just for that reason, that's it. He's fine with everything else. He just doesn't like having his front legs brushed or his nails trimmed. And I have never quipped a single nail on that dog and he's been having his nails trimmed since he was a puppy, a newborn. His breeder did um, trims and nail cuts and sanitary trims and all that sort of stuff and brushed him. 
and I did it the second he got home. He was in getting, you know, tidied up, washed, brushed, blow dried, all that jazz. And he just hates it. He hates having his front legs touched. It is just the way that some doggies are. They're a bit silly. A bit silly. So even though Jude's good with everything else, I don't really do too much with him because I don't need to and um, I don't like upsetting my doggies. He still gets brushed and groomed, don't worry. But I just keep him in a style that doesn't require that much brushing, especially on his front legs. Although he has been getting better with his nail trims lately. You gotta get brushed all over, little sweetheart. Give me this. You really did not have much hair here, did ya? I'm trying to think about what length we're gonna cut him to, and I think even if I don't even think a 16 millimeter would take anything off here. It would have to be a 13 millimeter. I was, like at first glance, thinking that he was going to be quite a bit longer than this. So even if your dogs do not like to be brushed, you still have to brush them. Unless you get them just a shave down every like 10 to 12 weeks, you have to brush them. You can't leave them unbrushed. It's not okay to do that. Um, so finding something that is the the tools that they are the least combative with um, and then just persisting just persisting just get it done um, don't accept any like terrible behavior if they're biting or whatever muzzle train them and uh, use other tools to you know make sure that they're being looked after of course do it in small um, sittings do like five minutes of brushing three times a day or whatever it takes to get them through. But if you're wanting to have a longer style cut on them, you need to happen, regardless of their silly behavior. And as you can see, he's distracted now, so he's not bothered at all. When he's distracted, he's not bothered by it, which tells me it's not painful. He's just got like some kind of anxiety around it and has just learnt to carry on about having his legs done. And so he carries on every time his legs get touched. Why, who knows, dogs are weird, they do weird stuff. Um, so a lot of people who have dogs that just don't enjoy being brushed, they've moved towards having shorter styles where they don't actually need to be brushed because they just get it all shaved off regularly enough that even though it might be tangly, there's no matting or anything that would be uncomfortable for them. And um, then it grows back and we do it again, cut it all off. That works just fine. And then other people who are determined to have long coats on dogs that don't like being brushed, they buy all the brushes, all the combs, all the tools, and they persist for a really long time, trying and trying and trying to brush train the dog and get them used to it. And some people have success and they go a long way with it. And then other people after about a year are like, just shave it off, I'm done with this. <laughs> Which is totally fair enough. Um, I don't want to wrestle Jude to, you know, like I can do long coat cuts on him, but then I gotta wrestle him to cut his front legs and that's really not fun. I don't enjoy it, I get frustrated, I feel angry. Um, and then I get irritated with my dog and I look at him and I'm like, you're such an idiot. And I don't wanna feel like that. So instead I just give him a short haircut and then we go and have cuddles in bed and everything is okay. Cause that's how I wanna spend time with my dog. I don't wanna spend time with my dog being frustrated, angry or you know having negative feelings towards him. Because I didn't get a dog so that I could be angry at my dog. I got a dog so that I could have cuddles and love and enjoy his company. So the haircut and the hairstyle and the grooming all matches in with that. Achieving that. Having a dog that I can love on and cuddle and enjoy. He still gets brushed um, every couple of days, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> but it, it's a quick brush. He really doesn't need that much brushing. Although he's quite hairy now, um, I'm not having as much success with a quick brush. It's taking a bit longer. Um, but yeah, it's just not worth it, in my opinion anyway. 
and not every dog is going to be, you know, up for grooming and love it and think it's the best time ever. Joey, Joey loves being groomed. Um, and Chew did initially love being groomed, but after like, I don't know, his first year, he was kind of like, yeah, I don't want to do this. Fair enough. Um, he's never been that keen on having his front legs done though. But once he kind of went through his doggy puberty and became a big boy, that's when he was putting his foot down more. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe not. Joey at the moment, he loves having his brush. He lays down on his back and puts all his legs up and he's like, yes, brush me human. He's really good with it. And he loves having his grooming done. He enjoys it. And so that's a really nice bonding time for us. And it's a really positive um, grooming time for us. You know, we get to hang out. We get to be, he, like while I'm brushing him, he's licking me, lick, 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 lick. He's grooming me back. And um, you know, it's a, uh, for both of us, a really positive experience, even though I hate being licked by dogs. <laughs> but he gets to do that and he loves it and he thinks it's the best time ever. So, um, you know, there's hope for me yet. I might have a dog that enjoys grooming. Alice enjoys her grooming except for the blow dryer. She just doesn't like to be blow dried. Everything else she loves. Um, but, I mean, when I got her, I was not a dog groomer and um, she had never been blow dried in her life until I started grooming and then I was like, blow dry time! And she was like, oh my god! Um, so, that was fun. <laughs> I used to just um, give her a, she used to get in the shower with me and have a shower. She loves having a shower. Um, and then air dry, like I'd wrap her up in a towel and give her a cuddle for like half an hour and then I'd change over to a new like dry towel along the way. And we'd have all of our cuddles and then once she was mostly dry I would brush her out and then let her air dry for a couple of hours and then brush her again. And that worked, that worked just fine. Um, but now I grew her out here, I'm like well we've got a blow dryer and she's not that keen on it. She's getting better though. She likes the fluff dryer and she rolls around on her back while I fluff dry her. So she's getting better with that. All right, I think you are oh, brushed out. Maybe, hang on, I don't think I did your back legs, did I? Don't be such a pretty boy. So most of the dogs that are overly sensitive about the brush are actually much better with the comb. I don't know why. I don't know what the difference is. Personally, I think the comb pulls more than the brush does. So if it was a pain thing, I would find the comb to be more painful than the brush. But I, for whatever reason, I just did um, Marley the giant schnauzer yesterday and she is incredibly brush reactive. I so much as pick up a brush and she is snapping her, like you can hear the snap of her teeth in the air. She gets so worked up about it. But she'll let me drag this through any knot, mat or whatever and pull the hair out. Schnauzers can be um, hand, um, what's the word? Not plucked. <laughs> what is the bloody word? Whatever. You can pluck them like a chicken. <laughs> My brain is not working today. What is the word? My brain's got nothing. I've got a blank space. Good golly. Somebody give me the word I'm looking for when you pull the hair. Anyways, schnauzers can be um, that word that I can't think of. Stripped, thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness, I need some coffee. I need a coffee. Um, yeah, schnauzers can be hand stripped. Thank you, Debbie. Holy moly. Oh, oh, like my brain keeps going plucked. I'm like, it's not plucked, plucked, it's not plucked. That over and over again in my head, and I'm like, just give me a word, give me the right one. <laughs> Far out, Brussels sprout. Schnauzers can be hand stripped, so you can pull the hair. So this schnauzer will let me put my comb in, and when there's a big lump of a mat like this, pull in and just pull it out, which is more uncomfortable in my opinion than brushing. She's fine with that, but you pick up a brush, oh my goodness, not a chance. She will eat you. 
Um, so she's such a funny girl. I groomed her yesterday um, and her sister Millie. They were both good. Millie was pretty matted and mum was pretty adamant that we not shave her. So um, I didn't demat so much as find and locate the mats and cut them out. Um, and I was able to do a pretty good groom, although there are chunks missing all over the place, um, which mum knew was going to happen. I gave her the heads up first. Uh, but it did take three hours to get her groomed, which should have been a two hour groom, which is insane. I spent an hour just on dematting. When I say dematting, I really do not mean brushing out mats. I mean finding them and just removing them with my clippers. Now, let's find a length that's going to go on this doggy. 13, 16, and 19. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Oh my goodness, I had nothing, just absolutely nothing. I just kept repeating, plucking. No, it's not plucking. <laughs> Imagine we plucked dogs. Uh, I think we might be able to do the 16. I don't know, he really doesn't need a full cut. He's looking really good. Do I just cut my losses and lose money and send him home to a sanitary? We might do that. I think that's going to be the better choice for him. He really is in very good condition other than tidying up his edges and doing a sanitary. So let's do that and see how long it takes. Because uh, I would seriously just be cutting him for the fun of it at this point. His hair's actually in really good condition. He does have some wiry hair. So normally I would um, go through and do a cut just because these... Um, I see it in toy poodles too, um, but the cavoodles, they come through with this, oh, you probably can't see it, but there's like these wire hairs that stick up higher than the fluff hairs. This is where I talk about having a mixed coat. Um, and they look, uh, they just look a bit like unruly. I don't know, I don't love it. So he's got patch, like this is a whole patch of wire hair here. But all over, I can just see these wire hairs that stick up a little bit more than anything else. You can't see it. I don't know how to show it, but yeah. So normally I'd do a full cut no matter what, but he's actually really not that bad. There's a couple of places, but yeah, I hope that makes sense. They are really happy with the length and the length is not that long. He's in great condition other than his ears being a bit matted. And mum has specifically asked me to shorten those up today, so that'll take me a little bit to get done as well. Alright. So we will scissor trim up some of the longer areas rather than do a full groom. I don't know how long that's going to take me, but we'll see. I really do need a coffee though. Oh, am I swearing in my subtitles? Oh goodness. Naughty subtitles. Uh, how's the schnauzers groomed? Did she behave herself? So I took three hours doing Millie, who's the small dog, um, and that three hour appointment should have been used on Marley, the giant schnauzer. Um, so I have to see I, if I could do my best to get her groomed done in two hours instead of three hours. Uh, and I worked my butt off. I worked so fast I, was, I had a sweat built up. I was sweating. Um, and she was actually really well behaved. The only part I really struggled with actually was doing her face because she throws her head around when I do her face. And those schnauzer eyebrows, you gotta get your scissors right up to the corner of the eye, like right to the corner of the eye here, and then um, cut. And she throws her head around and it scares the crap out of me. I'm gonna poke her in the eye one day with a very sharp pair of scissors. So that took a while to get her face done. And of course, because I can't use a brush, I have to comb her. So that took a while, especially combing out her beard, which is now about this long from her bottom jaw down. Yeah, it's getting really long. And she, 
I'm trying to shape it and she just, she throws her head around like a maniac. It's nearly impossible to get done. That took a while, but all in all, I actually got her groom done in two hours, which I surprised myself for once. Um, I was shocked. I worked really fast and hard and I don't normally work that fast or hard. Uh, so it worked out really well. Um, she was good for her combing, not brushing. And um, she, yeah, it was just her face. I, she did throw an absolute fit when I shaved her paw pads. I don't shave her paw pads every time I groom her um, because they don't grow that fast. And like she donkey kicks. She's donkey kicked my clippers across the room before, uh, which really sucks. Um, excuse me, hi, can we just stand up please and get our butt shaved like good boys? Thank you. Yeah, so I kind of like just have a look at them and see how they are. Um, in the past, she's been really snappy and bitey about having a put like I touch her feet and she bites. So I've been selective about when I do it. If it needs to be done, I do it. If they're not too bad, I'm like, yeah, we'll leave it. Um, so I did have paw pads yesterday and um, she did a few donkey kicks, but I positioned myself to not get kicked in the face, which was amazing. Oh, she tail whipped my face like across here. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was a mark here. Um, she just she did a shake and then shook her tail out, and I had the table up quite high, and her tail just went pff, straight into my face, and I like saw black, the darkness for a second, absolutely whacked the crap out of me, um, and it wasn't once, it was three times, just bang, bang, bang. Um, so yeah, schnauzers have very hard tails. It was like getting smacked in the face with a lump of wood. So that's a first. I've been tail whacked, tail whipped by a schnauzer tail, a giant schnauzer tail. Um, I did not pass out or get knocked out, thank goodness. But I did get like a, I, I saw black for a second there. <laughs> My brain felt that. So that was fun. But I think she's getting better. Like overall, she was good for the bath. Oh, you can't blow dry her face. Not even like for a second. Um, so that sucked. And I don't know how this happened, but she ripped the loop off out of the wall. In the bath, I was washing her face. She hates having her face touched. Somehow she ripped the loop out and jumped out of the bath. Um, and when and then she jumped on the table and sat on the table i was like are you kidding me right now so it all happened very very quickly i was trying to i was just washing her face with water and she snapped at me and then she just pulled and within like one second she was halfway out the tub so i um i kind of like caught her as she was going over the edge because i knew i wasn't going to get her back in so i kind of caught her as she was going to the edge and helped her to the ground Water went everywhere, which was a disaster. Because I didn't turn the water off, I just dropped the hose thing. Um, and then she was just sitting on the table like, all right, let's do it over here. I was like, what the hell, man? Um, and I looked at the lead. She still had the lead around her neck and the attachment to the wall. But the actual, the actual round eye thing that's in the wall, that was still there. And then it's got like a, a clip on it. So I think she pulled the clip so hard that it popped backwards, the opposite way of what it's supposed to go. So she's very naughty. She didn't hurt herself. Um, I did hurt myself catching her and lowering her to the ground at a very awkward angle. Um, but yeah, so that was fun. That hasn't happened to me since, uh, the only other dog that's done that to me is, actually I've had two dogs do it, a Tibetan Mastiff. Um, that pulled the actual loop out of the wall. That was awful because the Thai Batten Mastiff didn't pull the loop out of the wall to get out of the bath. The Thai Batten Mastiff pulled the loop out of the wall to attack me. So that sucks, but fortunately I had um, three loops on the dog. So while it broke the first one, it did not break the second and third one, and I didn't get bitten. Yay! Um, on Marley, however, I only had one loop, so whoopsie daisies. Now I know. Crazy food of a dog. 
Now I know. Yes, I brushed your tail. You're fine. You'll live. Um, the other one that did it was a German Shepherd, and they actually broke the um, this part. So where it loops onto the attachment, they actually snapped this part of it. Uh, no, this it was like this part. Sorry, this actually like broke, the metal part broke, and that was a German Shepherd. Shorthead German Shepherd farm dog, absolute lunatic, no training, um, because they just, I don't know, like these people shouldn't have owned the dog, seriously. Um, they, they bought the dog, the dog is outside with no fences on the property at all. It is a farm, they grow something there. And they just take the lid out off of a can of dog food and throw it outside. Um, they said every night, but the dog was extremely underweight um, and had really bad worms. And I kept telling them, you need to get him to the vet. He's not well and um, he's very, very underweight. And just, yeah, so no socialization, no fences. So he would roam around town all over the place. Um, and yeah, very, very underweight. So I ended up buying worming medicine and just I just wormed him because they weren't gonna take him to a vet and they weren't gonna get him any medication. So I wormed him a few times and he seems to get a little bit better, um, but yeah. So then they got a second German Shepherd, but a long haired German Shepherd puppy. And again, outside, no fences. And um, he went walkabouts and then he went missing. Um, yeah, he went missing and there was post shed everywhere looking for him and whatever. Um, and about a month or two months later, they found his remains and he'd been, um, either hit by a car or he just succumbed to the elements of being, you know, no food, no water and being lost far too young to be anywhere without, um, family to look after him. Uh, and yeah, so that happened. Um, and I stopped operating mobile. I started operating here and they were not able to get him into the car. The, uh, the first German Shepherd, they couldn't get him in the car to bring him here. Um, so that was the end of that. So that German Shepherd, when he snapped the um, lead in the bath, he also jumped out the window of my mobile grooming trailer. He broke the window, he busted the window out and jumped out the window. The window was like this wide. It's like one of those windows that goes across the side of it. Uh, plastic windows, busted the whole thing out. He jumped at it head first, smashed the window out and jumped out the window. And I was just standing there going, what the just happened? Like, what the heck? <laughs> like, I'm very careful. I don't want dogs jumping out of the tub. They hurt themselves. It's too high for them to jump out. This dog not only jumps out of the bathtub, but through the window within seconds. I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Very aggressive dog, um, very dangerous dog. I did my best to look after him. I, I taught him how to sit, um, lay down, shake. Uh, I taught him to do some walking on his lead. I gave him his worming medicine. Like I was trying to help this dog, uh, but unfortunately I needed to move on in my business and um, they weren't prepared to do anything to you know, keep the dog coming for grooming. So that was the end of that, which is really sad. Um, yeah, really, really sad. And uh, well, I think a few months down the road, he actually got hit by a car too. So I don't know if they have any other dogs. I really hope they don't. Um, and yeah, don't get a dog if you can't provide the proper care for them. Like the, at least the basics. I know everybody wants to have a dog. If you can't provide the basic care for that dog, please don't get a dog or set yourself up, change your situation and your circumstances um, to get a dog. Excuse me, I would like to trim up your Tootsie Woods. No, thank you. Yes, I know, you can have a temper tantrum. I've seen it, it's impressive. Now, may I get on with it? Uh, unfortunately, as a dog groomer, and especially as a mobile groomer, you see some things that you really wish you didn't. Um, and then there's like absolutely nothing you can do about it except for make a report to somebody who might do something about it. Which really sucks. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely sadness in dog grooming.
Sorry for the sad story. Uh, and those things, they stay with you too as a dog groomer. You think that like, oh, I've been there, done that, seen it all, don't really care or don't get affected by it. But yeah, like that German Shepherd dog, um, I think about him probably every, I don't know, two to three weeks. I always have. Um, and I probably always will. There's other dogs too that have had really sad stories. Which sucks. But yeah, they stay with, with us, most of us anyway. Sometimes I think I'm really glad I wasn't smart enough to be a vet. <laughs> I wanted to be a vet. I'm, I'm really quite glad that I was not smart enough to be a vet. Like mental health wise, I would not have been one of the strong ones. Um, it would not have been for me. I would have gone through all that effort to end up in a career that I decided I didn't want. Because I just would not cope with the sadness. What is something is rickety on these? Okay, it was that. I can hear lots of trucks outside. Kitty liver, kitty liver, kitty litter is so heavy. It is, right? Do you get big five kilogram bags or bigger? I've seen them as heavy as 20 kilograms and I think, oh my goodness, like 20 kilograms, it doesn't sound like a lot. That is really heavy. My weightlifting limitations, like my maximum is around 15 kilograms. I can lift 20 kilogram bags, but it's not good. I know I'm going to suffer later if I do. Meanwhile, I pick up like 40 kilogram dogs. <laughs> and I suffer later. Every time I'm like, why did I pick up that dog?
Oh, you love his fluffy coat. It is a really cute coat. It's quite a nice coat. Um, as far as how it feels, it's very soft and fluffy. It's a lovely, lovely coat. But it does mat up. It is um, one of those easier to mat type coats. Ooh, 18 pounds. What's that like? It's not 10 kilos, is it? Is that? I'm no good at the trans transfer translation. What's the word? Don't get me started again. I can't change pounds to kilograms in my head. I don't remember what the difference is. Uh, Alex is going to ask if Samara had a groom, but that's not until tomorrow, is it? Tomorrow or the next day? I get confused in the days. So rather than doing like a full groom, we're just going to do like outline trimming and tidying. And I will use my scissors to get rid of the little wiry hairs that stick up. Which sometimes takes longer, but we're keeping that length, which is the goal here. Oh, I've got changed to tomorrow. Nice, hopefully that suits you guys. Works out well. Why do your butt hairs grow faster than your other hairs? Don't stand on the scissors.
anybody got any plans for the weekend doing anything fun why do I allow myself two people um, well unfortunately we all have to it sucks what did you do though did you hurt yourself I hope not How many kitty, you got all cats, right? How many kitty cats have you got at the moment? Out of curiosity, speaking of cats and adoptions, we haven't seen Pam for a little while. I really hope she's doing well with her kitties. She had some wee little babies last time we talked. No plans, Michaela? No, no plans for me. Grocery shopping, I'm working on Friday. I've had a lot of Fridays off lately, so I am working this week. Um, so that'll keep me busy. Go to bath the doggies. That'll keep me busy. That's like three to four hours work, just to give them a bath each. Out the way, please. Do their sanitary tidy ups. Um, grocery shopping washing uh, I've been sorting through some stuff and getting rid of things that I definitely do not need so I'll continue on with that but that's pretty much it just house stuff um, Jet wants to go get ice creams the petrol station down the road sells ice cream cones for $1 soft serve cones and they are actually really yummy 
So, Jet wanted to do that last weekend, but I just did not have the energy beans to do that. So we did not. Um, but maybe I'll take them this week to get an ice cream and if it's not too cold, we'll go sit down by the river or something and eat ice cream. That would be nice. Jet also is desperate to go to the movies. He wants to go to the theatre. Not, he doesn't know what he wants to see, but you know, we haven't done anything in such a long time. It is school holidays, which sucks for these kids because we don't take time off for school holidays, neither Dale or I do, which means we work, they stay at home doing whatever kids do when they're at home. And at the end of our work days, we're exhausted and we don't have the energy to do anything else other than cook and clean and then go to bed and get ready to do it all again tomorrow. So. Um, yeah, he wants to go to the movies, but um, obviously I can't afford to do that at the moment. It's a hundred dollars of fuel to get to the city and back. The movie tickets cost about hundred and twenty dollars for our family, something like that. And then you need to buy food and snacks and stuff. Like we we take stuff, but it's a long. It's six hours of driving, so we, it's a whole day. We need to do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and have snacks. Um, so it ends up being a very expensive outing. <laughs> so he did ask me and I said, no, we wouldn't be able to do it this time. He said, that's okay, maybe next holidays. Um, we won't be able to do it next holidays either. <laughs> maybe around Christmas time. Hopefully I'll be able to do something like that then. But we could set up a movie night at home. Not the same, I know. I was actually surprised that he wanted to go to the cinema because he doesn't, in the past, has not enjoyed it because it's too loud. Or like he enjoys it, but he gets worked up on like the, what's it gonna be like? Is it gonna be too loud? What do I do if it's too loud? And stuff like that but the, yeah the last time we went he was pretty good and then yeah he actually asked to go this time so that surprised me yeah I'll feel better by Monday for sure out the wrong way oh my goodness what a pesky little hair you're just gonna have a little gap there because that's the way the hair kinks why does it still feel like there's hairs there Get all the feet. Let me have this one back. Oh, how cool is that?
Oh, you haven't hurt yourself, Bree. Good. Oh, you've got your little ones have gone off to another carer. That'll give you a little bit of relief. Although the little ones are probably a bit easier to move on than the older ones. Uh, what's Stephanie doing? An event where they are playing Taylor Swift music and holding uh, playing with the kitties that are up for adoption. That is super cool. I want to go there. Actually, I just want to go anywhere because I only leave my house to go grocery shopping these days. <laughs> and it's so depressing. It is so depressing. Um, the, like, being under tight finances, um, which is, this is not my first rodeo having tight finances. And I know that, um, Financial strain like really messes with people's mental and emotional health and it also puts a strain on like, marriages and relationships and stuff like that. Families, it's tough for everybody. Um, but yeah, just like not being able to do anything, it sucks. It sucks so bad. We have not gone out like to do a family thing and I don't even know. I don't even know. Not this year, we haven't done anything this year. <laughs> Stephanie, that's funny. <laughs> Stephanie told her cat she'll be cheating on her on Friday. Um, Jude knows I've cheated on him every day. He sniffs me out. Yeah, Brie, you miss them. I would be totally attached to kittens, especially. I would be, I would get very attached and find it hard to say goodbye. Now, let's find a length to do your head on. I think we kind of like settled on... So I need to use clippers to do his head because his head is significantly longer than the rest of him. So I'll use a 19 millimeter in reverse. Yeah, she gets jealous. They're funny little critters, aren't they? I'm going to be just a second and then we will get this finished. Yes. Calm down. Oh, oh I'm running out of energy. Oh, oh. Okay, okay, okay. Calm down, calm down. Calm down. Oh, oh. 
Oh my, he is fast. How fast is this dog? Oh. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, don't nibble. That was my ear. Oh. Let's get you dry. Let's get you dry. Oh my God. This is not going as I thought it You have got beans. You've got beans. Calm down. I'm gonna get whiplash from flicking my head back. Ugh. All right, you crazy weenie. Stop. So, before I turn on the blow dryer, I need to secure this puppy because I can't have him walking off the ends of the table because he'll get hurt. Stop. You excited? Loser. The worst thing about board games is I always lose. I know, that's my favourite thing about board games. You always lose. Except for today, I think my... my luck is... I can't undo this thing. I did it up too tight when I did it. Well, I can put this in. Oh. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I've been roped into playing. Actually, no, this was all my idea. <laughs> you I'm you know, the you ideas. initiated this idea. I'm the ideas part of this. It all this. started with you, so here we are. It's games night. It's games night. But, like, I feel like these are all aggressive games. Like, we're aggressively gaming. <laughs> Tortillas. You know what's happening. Did you face the camera towards yourself? No. Why? It would be funny if we record this whole video and I'm not in the shot. Can you check? That's so, mine. this is called a party... Party animal! Party animal. You could have at least got me a red one. I've got, got my special shirt Oh yeah, on. we're wearing our shirts, thanks Ange. We were wearing them last night when we went to Macca's, so... <laughs> But mine's when, mine's stinky, but you can't smell it yet. When we decided to do this video, I said we must be wearing our shirts. Um, so here we are wearing our shirts. Party animal. Dun, 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 dun. So we went to Coles and we got the things that are necessary for the things so that we could do the things. And while I was picking up balloons, I saw these party animal badges and um, it seemed only fitting that we were wearing party animal badges. Okay. Choose your poison. What do you want to do first? <laughs> Pie face. Okay, let's go. Unpack it. You know what's really crap about this? Everything. The sound quality will be really bad. That's fine, but can you pause that washing machine? It's ruining everything. <laughs> <laughs> you and your washing machine. <laughs> do you know how much washing I have to do in here? I should get an SD card for the sound and do it that way. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Sit okay. down. Okay, I have everything I need to kick your butt. <sighs> Oh my goodness, we have not so played this. So what is this, this. game, wait. Um, you wind the windy windy. So who do you want to win this, guys? Oh yeah, in the comments now, right. Who's going to win? Who do you want to win, but who's going do to win? Do you know what it is? Look at the kid in the back, he's terrified. <laughs> I remember we, the kids were so little oh, when yeah, we did this. It's been right. in the for so long. Jet I'm, did not want to do it. I'm he's slightly like, terrified I, I that do it's this. messy. Jet was so upset. I hope it's all being properly cleaned. It looks good. You don't, you don't eat off I know, but... <coughs> Sorry, it still, still puffing. Okay, you I hope need... it still works it's not broken. You need this. What does that you do? You need this. I don't know. There's no instructions. Wait, this is, this is the chin thing. The chin goes on there. That's the winder. Yeah, like that. How does that go on there? Ah, oh, look at you go. Okay. Why, why are you facing it at me first? Don't face it at me. Hang you need to go more there. I'll go first. My arms are sore, I've worked all day. Give it to me, I'll shake it. I got it. No, let, him, let a man shake it. Yeah, of course. It's <laughs> disgusting, stop it. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's the thing. Ew. I'm sickened right now. Oh, shit. 
How many rounds are we doing? So I don't know, but you're going to have to see your face, so go over there. Okay. We're going this you got. You did a three already? You no, did I a three. we hadn't started. I saw you flick it. I saw you flick oh, it. I was just like testing do it, it out. Do it here, please. Do it here. It's here. They can't see it. They can't if you do see it here, they can either. see it there. They've got more chance to see it. All right, all right. Okay, but you got to... There. I was just testing it. All right. And you rolled a three. Whatever. Look, there's another three. Three. <laughs> I'm like, I've got this, but then at the same time, I was like, I don't want to do this. Which way do you turn it? I don't know. Mm. Ooh. Oh, no! No! Oh, game over. Oh, no! Thanks, guys. See you later. As if! <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Oh. I win. <laughs> Is that game over it's or so what? It's so tempting to throw the cream at <laughs> no, your nose. No, no, do it again. Oh, you just, you just, you I had some on your finger and you just rubbed it on your nose. Okay. Hang on, wait. Don't. Um, no, I'm putting it in oh, the sink. Oh, you're putting it in the sink. Why don't you just put it back on there? Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Now, do I have to <laughs> Re on my face? Recycled cream. Okie dokie. Oh, my other camera's not working. All right. We decided, yes. Oh, I took some more Panadol. Hopefully that will help me a little bit. Sometimes these guys have um, like a big dip in their head there. So most of the time with your guard combs, you kind of like just follow the shape of the dog, but you do have to be careful in their noggins because you can take out more than you're meant to. And sometimes I forget that and do take out more than I've meant to. Today I did not. You're still wet in here, mister. Turn this way. be tempted to bring another kitty cat home. We don't have any adoption events here. If we did, I would not be allowed to go because for sure I would make a whoopsie and accidentally bring home another pet. I'd be like, look at him, sad face. Look at how sad he is. Nobody loves him. <laughs> there was a miniature poodle uh, for giveaway on one of our Facebook local pages recently. And he just looks so sad. Um, I hear he went to a good home, so that's good news. Can you put your head up nicely? It's not a good angle. I can't really see what's happening. There we go. It's better. We want to get you all nice and round.
Jizzle. That's the name. Hi, the Jizzle. Thanks for following. Welcome. If you're in our stream. No wriggling. No wriggling. No, no wiggles. There is something blowing around outside. It was our rubbish day today and without fail rubbish ends up blowing around somewhere. Every time. You're a drooly little fellow, aren't you? Stop your wriggling. Stop your wiggling. Excuse me. Sit. Sit down. To do anything, you just have to sit still. You're fine. Come here. Come here. Good boy. You're being extra, and you don't need to be. Just so thick, isn't it? Now. Yeah, Joey will eat the, eat the rubbish. He sure will. He had a, um, they eat their dog food comes in those little, like, single serve trays. I used to do the cans, but they eat such a small amount. Um, it was better value to get the little single serve trays. And they, he had one of those bloody little trays last night. I don't even know where he got it from. And um, he was just running around the house with it going crinkle, 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 crinkle. I'm pretty sure that's what's blowing around outside at the moment. One of those stupid tin foil trays. Driving me crazy. But I was laying in bed being a depressed little chicken because I haven't got anything better to do. <laughs> He's just running around like tinkle, 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 tinkle everywhere. And it was so freaking loud. So I had no choice but to get up and chase the little rat bag and he loves it when you chase him. He thinks it's the best thing ever. So of course he just ran faster. Then he had a sock, got that off him. And he had um, a scrunchie. 
I don't know where I got the scrunchie from. Only myself and Abigail wear scrunchies and I usually put mine back in the exact same spot when I take them off. So Abigail must have left one out. So he had fun with that. Um, and then I fell asleep for a while and when I woke up he was asleep on top of another sock. <laughs> yeah, we got one more dog to go. One more. Stop that. I'm moving so slowly today at a snail pace. Alright, just let me get this hair out of your eyes, alright? Good boy. Oh my goodness. That's enough. Just such enough to just see me, boy. That was it. The dramatics were not necessary. Just gonna be right in the corner of your eye there. That's all. You have to be silly boy about it. No. Alright, let's do your little front lip. No, thank you. No. Can you sit down? Stop that. Stop. No. Unnecessary. Now, see? That's not cut even. Stop that. Stop. You're fine. You're getting a haircut. Nothing. Nothing scary. Shh. You're a terror. You know that. Yeah. Look, it's not scary, see? Not scary at all. Good boy. Good boy. Try a different way. Sit. Obviously not going to be as nice of a cut, but it's going to get some of that hair out from the front of his mouth, which is where he has a huge amount of drool. Your dribble guts. Yeah. Okay. You're messing all your hair up. It's all looking weird. Right back. Stop. 
Stop it. Stop being a rat bag. Put your head straight. Kind of even. His head is always sideways. How do you do an even haircut on a sideways dog? Begizzle, begizzle. How do you say it? Is it a jip or a gip sound? Sit. All right, right bag. So, Mom asked for a rounded ear. Not like the whole ear, just the bottom of it. Take some length off him, but make it more round. He has the thickest bloody ears. Look at that. That is an insane amount of swoop. Ears are definitely not my strong point in any way, shape or form. This will be fun. I'm going to turn around a little bit. I did do um, a lot with the blow drying for these ears to get them nice and straight. That definitely helps when you're cutting them. <laughs> you want the hair straight. Hold your head up. You're a big boy. You can hold your own head. Stop twitching it, yeah, you little goose. Alright, there you go. Look in the camera, let me see. Sorry, my fingers 
didn't work for a second there. Turn your head. It's round. <laughs> it's round enough. Can I have this one now? Come here. It's too short, it's not going through. I was hoping to just trim his tummy up a little bit. Why does it look like I only did half of the sanitary green? Turn around and let me do your other ear now. Good boy. Oh, laundry day. See you when you get back, Alex. And welcome back, Hannah. Wait, where did those little hairs just come from? You just pulled them out of nowhere. Stay still. No, thank you, sir. No, thank you.
actually super cute. <laughs> I need a cute ear. Now I'm gonna make this one cute and matching. So I've definitely done some really bad ears before in the past, which is what puts me off um, trying when I can just do a straight line and be done with it. <laughs> I have disappointed some customers before. I have done ears so bad that I just shaved the whole ear off and apologized. It's a learning curve for sure. Um, so I've definitely learned a few times what not to do. So that's helpful, but yeah, I haven't quite always like learned all the way what to do for different shapes that people might want. But grooming is, well, it's an art form and it's a work in progress and it's something that you're always learning. There's always something new to learn, whether it's a new way to do something, a new technique, a new tool, a piece of equipment a new product, like there is always something to be learned in dog grooming. A new skill or an old skill that might have a new uh, new way of doing it. I don't know. Anyway, there's lots to learn all the time. And of course, as with lots of other things in the world, people's tastes and styles change and they change bloody fast in today's society. So people want different things done to what they did the last time you groomed them all of a sudden. Um, so that happens too. Anyways, it's an ever growing and progressing industry. So you should always be trying new things. Excuse me, no, no, I'm trying to trim your ears and make them look cute. Anyways, look at them, look at those little ears. Are they the same length? No, this one is still longer on the inside. Oh, and I have little fluffy ear hairs everywhere. That's it, just hang that ear down there for a minute. No, stop that, thank you. No, no temper tantrums. We can have temper tantrums later. I know you're tired, you're gonna go home soon. Stop at your rat bag. Look at your face.
definitely going to have to be a good boy and let me tidy this up, okay? It's not optional. Because we've already started, so we can't stop. That's the bad news. We're going to roll with it. Oh, my word. Stop it. Okay, we're definitely getting there now. There is no quick way that I'm aware of to make this happen either, this rounded style. It's quite literally just keep chopping until it looks good. And some people can do that a little bit easier than others. They just like know where to chop and that's awesome. And other people not so much. I am the other people. <laughs> definitely the other people, the not so much people. Oh my word. You have got to stop that, mister. But see how it's taking me a really long time to do? This is why I don't do it on every dog. It just is so time consuming. Alright, let's look at you. I'm sure if I did start doing it on every dog, I would get quicker. But for now, I am not there. Unfortunately, most people aren't very fussy. They're just like, yeah, whatever. I don't really care. Just make it cute. All right. The straight line's cute. It'll do. There we go. One round, chunky head with mostly rounded ears, depending on what angle you're looking at it from. Let's get rid of that a little bit. Oh my goodness, with the twitchy ears, stop it. I know that hair's sticking out there. I'm not going to cut it because it's only going to get worse if I do. Alright. I think you're done, mister. Let's get this stuff off the table. Did I trim all of your nails? I don't remember if I trimmed any of your nails, actually. to be here. Imagine if it didn't go. Oh man. <laughs> Which way did you turn it? So oh, good. <laughs> two, 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 two. No, wait, 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 wait. It's two. That's a five. You pushed it. No, that's five. It's two. <laughs> no, forwards. verify too? Yes, just do it. I feel like I'm going to get slapped with a cream pie 500 times. Oh, God, come down. Oh, there's not even 
even words for this monstrosity of a disastrous event that's taken place. I got it on my place. face because there's some up here. <laughs> Two. Oh, this is so hard. I don't want to do it. They all want me to. Five, that's a liner. Four. Five, no, it's a four. It's more on the floor. Scissors, paper, rock. And if I. One, okay, one only. One only. Scissors, paper, paper, rock. Shoot. Five. Right. Fine. 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 One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I just wanted to stand back and have a good look at him. And see if there's anything to change. And there is. No, 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 no. I don't want you to do that. I know, you just, it's the sound of a scissor. I'm sorry that you don't like it. You're fine though, you're absolutely fine. Okay, just let me get rid of some of these little hairs in here. <sighs> you're wild. I kind of wish I just did a full room on him, but it would have been like significantly shorter. I would have had to do a 13 millimeter and he would have lost way more length than his mum would have liked. Okay. I don't know if I trimmed, I know, I think I trimmed some nails, but not all of them. There is not much to come off these. Bree's off. See you a bit later, Bree. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll see you next week. So the issue is he's got quite long quicks because his nails are not trimmed regularly enough to keep them short. Which is very pesky. So even though they're long, I can only take so much off them. Which is a commonly misunderstood issue amongst pet parents. They um, look at the nails and go, they're still long. Um, unfortunately, once every sort of like 12 weeks is not often enough for maintaining the, the overall length of the nail. That's, that makes it tricky, won't be a sec. <laughs> <laughs> it's still looking for It's bloody four. Four, here we go. <laughs> One. <laughs> anyway, we're finished playing that game now. <laughs> no, you can't again. No, we're done. No, you are not done. <laughs> That's, oh god. This is not acceptable. <laughs> I hate this game. I love it. It's brilliant. I usually lose board games, but this is sensational. <sighs> Are you ready? No. Go <laughs> 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 again. Go no, again. It bounced off my nose. This is horrible. Oh, this is your turn. Oh. oh, you got cream all over Four. the thing. You did. <laughs> One, two, three. Thank you, dogs. My next doggy is here, but um, he's not that great with other dogs. So I usually, and he's a bit of a handful to get into the salon. So I actually usually go and get him out of the car and bring him in myself. 
rather than mum like come in with him. So she's just called to let me know that she's here and if I'm ready, which I'm not, but that's okay. We've still got 10 minutes or so to go with this appointment. So that's not a worry. We'll finish off this little fella. And then we'll go get Mr. Bear. Obviously this is not how I normally groom this, so I've gone, well I'm moving slow anyway because I don't feel well. Um, but, it's not how I normally groom dogs either. Oh you bugger. Sorry guys. Yeah, it's not how I normally groom dogs either, so a bit out of my routine. Get out of the way chair. All right, okay, try that again. <laughs> Awesome, Hannah. You would have so much to catch up on. Can call it a nice spring clean for you. <laughs> I'm so glad you got a new one. I, I definitely know going without a washing machine is not fun. Had that happen a couple of times in my lifetime, and it is not fun. And it happened in the salon here too, and that really sucked. Fortunately, I was able to like wash my doggy towels at home. But that's not ideal. All right, let's have finished doggy. How's he look? Cute. I kind of, oh, I need to fix this camera. I kind of wish I did his ears just a little bit shorter to his jawline. Um, that, that's an afterthought. Now that I've done it, I can see that it would have been a little bit cuter if they were just up here. Um, but he does have cavalier ears. So that ear leather is actually really quite long. So I don't know if I would be able to go that short. Oh my goodness, you rat bag. Sit. Look here. Oh, so cute. All right, I'm going to pop him in the crate, message his mum, and then um, I just started moving way faster than my body wanted to. And then I'll go get there, the German Shepherd. And we'll do a German Shepherd room. See you in a sec. Go. Go. Oh. Oh. That's enough. It's just getting it extra spicy. Hang on, I've got my, uh, my hands. All right. <sighs> oh shit! What was three. that? Oh, actually, it's three. It's words. three. <laughs> uh... It's so funny when it happens to somebody else. <sighs> it's good. It's good. Right, one more for you. Nah, I'm good. Now come on, just do one more. What? Come on, bit of fun. If, well, if I do one more, you got to do one more because I went first. No, no, bit of, bit of fun. Just do one more. Two. Uh, uh, it's so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to pass it. That was so funny. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> it's in my... It's in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh god, I oh, don't, it's yucky goat, oh, don't. <laughs> oh god. Oh, oh god. Oh. <laughs> oh no, I sniffed. Oh. Oh, that hurts to laugh that much. Oh, my God. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm going to wash my face. I can't even with this. How dare you? Oh, God. It's on my shirt. I don't have hot water in here. Oh, it's oh. everywhere. Oh, my God. You are in so much trouble. <laughs> 
say that, didn't you? Sorry, sorry, oh. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Give me that towel. Oh, it's there, it's there. <laughs> On your badge. <laughs> On my party animal badge. Party animal badge. Oh. <sighs> I feel like I'm relatively unscathed. <laughs> Put this away. <laughs> No, 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 that was fair and square. What was fair about that? You, it went off. I just put it back down again. <laughs> it didn't go off. I didn't even turn the switch yet. Oh, God, you didn't. I, was still I should have waited. I should have waited. I, I should have waited to till one. I was myself. Oh, I should have. Look at my shirt now. I should have waited for one. <laughs> you were in so much trouble, mister. Oh, no. Is it all off my face? Oh, you're going to hit me. <laughs> yes. Did it get up your nose? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, did Anyway, next game. <laughs> oh, you wait till, till, till Tortilla slap. <laughs> tortilla slap you to oh. next week, mate. I'm going to Tortilla slap you to next week's next week. <laughs> <clears throat> How rude. <laughs> How dare I? You guys, did you see what he just did? I don't think they did. I think they, they've seen it in slow-mo by now. Oh my word, you are a naughty boy. You are a very naughty boy. Well, I wanted you old anyway, I just wanted to see. Two. No, you wouldn't have been. Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have I just clicked it. Do you know how much I had to restrain myself to prevent me from doing that to you? <laughs> Okie dokie. One big bear. One big bear. Hey, calm down, would ya? Okay, so he knows I have another dog in the salon and he's being a bit of a goose about it. Can you put your, your bum's not on the table? You gotta sit on the table properly. Good boy. So Bear's an interesting boy. He's suffered really badly with um, skin allergies and bacteria on his skin. Not necessarily yeast, but just different types of bacteria on his skin that he hasn't been able to fight off on his own. And so he's had lots of skin infections. Um, and I've been recommending a vet visit for, I don't know, the last three. Does anybody know how long I've been grooming for? I don't three years, four, three to four years, I don't know, something like that. I have no idea how long I've been grooming for. Um, and yeah, so I've been grooming him this whole time and I have definitely recommended vet visits. He's been to the vet and not really got any answers a few times. We've used medicated shampoos and, and done treatments for his skin to try and help him. A few different things. Um, we've groomed him regularly, we've groomed him not regularly. And he hasn't really, he's had like improvements but never really got better. So recently he was really, really bad and his hair was falling out all over the place. He had bald patches on his back end and his nose and face. So it's in a pretty bad way. Um, and he went to the bed and started a medication, a tablet. I don't know what it is. I don't ask those things because it doesn't really change much for me. Even if they told me what it was, it still wouldn't mean anything to me. So I don't really focus on that. Uh, but he's in the 
best condition I've ever seen it. It's absolutely amazing. He's getting his full coat is growing back in. He's thick and just beautiful and shiny. No hot spots, no um, bacteria on the skin. Uh, he just looks beautiful. And he's not scratching anymore. So finally they must have got somebody to listen and do the right tests and give it a go with a new medication and it's working. So that's amazing. You're alright, I'll get you in the bath in a minute. You're getting grey around the beard, old man. <laughs> His beard's all grey. He is definitely a big boy. Some dogs will take their tablets and not have much of an improvement, which is really disappointing. Then they swap over to an injection, but the tablets are working for him, so that just makes me so bloody happy for him. Hang on, mister, you're all right. You don't need to lie down, you can sit there. Uh, so when I went out, he knew that my cat was out there and, um, <laughs> I did call him an old man. You're getting on, aren't ya? I'm not sure how old he is, but for a big fella, he's definitely getting on. He's doing well though. They definitely start to fall apart over the years and it's, um, I've been grooming long enough now. No, just sit please, just sit, all right? You can have a rest later. Um, yeah, I've been grooming long enough to see dogs go from being fit and young to not so young and not so fit. Definitely. You're a good boy though, aren't ya? You know he's just dripping. He is a good boy but he's very loud. So prepare yourselves. Because he's a big baby. I know we talked about it and he'd gotten really bad to the point that um, I couldn't actually groom him. I needed to say, no, I can't groom him because it's too much. Uh, and I'm worried that it's painful for him or getting like bacteria and infectious stuff in my equipment that I don't want in my equipment. Even though we clean, um, you know, there's still risks there. Come on, we're gonna have a bath. Yeah, I know, stubborn boys. Let's go, come on, good boy. Oh, don't do it. Come on, in the tub. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on, you have to have a bath. Yeah, I know, you stubborn boy. Let's go. Come on. Get down. All right, let's trick you. Come here. This way, please. Come on. No. No, you're having a bath. Come on. Here. No. Here. Up. Up. Around. All right. oh. So you have to watch these guys, they get sore hips as they age on, um, especially when they've got deep sloping backs. Yeah. Up. Oh. And of course, if you hurt a dog, they will bite you. Oh. So you do have to be careful and support them properly. Stay there. I know, your mum will be here real soon, buddy. Here comes the big baby. Here comes the big baby. Who's your big baby boy? Who's your big baby boy? I know, you go have a bath. It's the end of the world. Get down in the tub, thank you. You can be a big baby, but mind your manners, thank you. Yeah, mind your manners. Mm -hmm. 
who's the big baby? Is it there? The big baby boy. I think he loves being a big baby boy. Fungal infection, that's what I was trying to think of. Uh, yeah, definitely. I kept saying bacteria. Fungal, that's what I was trying to think of. Lots of sort of fungal type infections. Uh, anything. It can be anything growing in, you know. If the dog can't fight it off themselves, they just get worse and worse. And you can throw anything you like at it. You won't get on top of it. Not without an uh, actual um, antibiotic and the appropriate treatment. Yeah, you knocked off the rubber duckies. I have one rubber ducky wedged in here at the moment. I've got to go hunting for the rest of them. So normally, or like in the past when I've been bathing him, he just scratches and scratches and scratches. And uh, the last time I groomed him, he was in such good condition. I was absolutely amazed and hardly any scratching at all. So hopefully today we don't really see any scratching at all. But when I put the water on, his skin would literally crawl. You're all right, buddy. Mum's gonna be here soon. So now that his hair's all growing back in, his coat is very thick. Very thick. And, but less shedding, that is, like there's less hair coming out. His coat's getting back to a normal growth pattern um, and shedding pattern, so he should not be shedding as much and his coat should get nice and thick and full. And shiny, because you've had a dull coat for ages. Either the, the client, the pet parent, doesn't want to go ahead with doing like skin scraping and testing to work out what the exact bacteria is. And lots of vets will say, we'll just try this antibiotic and see how we go. And initially, almost all antibiotics will bring about some relief. Like initially it'll look like, oh yeah, that's getting better. But it's not enough to totally kill it off and get rid of it. So eventually, it just comes back again. Oftentimes it comes back worse or faster or, you know, um, in new areas of the dog and stuff like that. So if you're having, like, you know, a long period of, of battling something, get the skin scrapings done and the swabs and get the tests done. Find out exactly what it is and, and treat that instead of just throwing broad spectrum at it. It's not always suitable. And yeah, it totally will give you a little bit of relief initially, but it won't last long. And you might think, oh, he's got that bacteria back again, or that fungal infection's back again, or that yeast infection's back again. But really, it actually never went. It never got totally killed off. So you have to be have the right medication for the precise type of infection that it is, and you need to be on it long enough to actually knock it right out and get on top of it. And then if 
like in Bear's case, you know, it's a long-term problem, some kind of preventative measures, which I think is what's happening now, is he's on a, like a lifetime medication, possibly for allergies. So maybe um, he was initially getting allergies and then he scratched so much and then it gets a bacteria and then they're not able to get on top of the bacteria or fungus or whatever it is. So by preventing the allergies, you're preventing the scratching, which is going to prevent him from breaking the skin and inducing, introducing bacteria that he can't fight off. I mean, that's the way I look at it. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how it kind of goes. I am not a vet. But I do know that, especially skin issues, you really got to stay on top of it for a long time. Let's turn her around. Do not jump out of the tub. Oh yeah, I was onto it. This way, thank you. Yeah, right by. Read you like a book. No. Okay, okay. Look at all your hair coming out. And it's undercoat and not top coat. You've got a good undercoat happening. How good is that? Yeah, that's a good thing, Harry boy. Floppy's beautiful. Are you excited? So one of the benefits of regular grooming, even though we are not, um, we're not knowledgeable in, in a way that we can diagnose issues with your dog, we can identify them really early on. And um, if the groomer, like I don't really nearly say to people go to the vet. I only say that when I'm definitely sure they need to go to the vet. Because I don't want people to get, you know, in a situation where they're spending money that they don't have, uh, and they didn't need to go. So I definitely only say it when I definitely think it is a necessity for the dog. Uh, and most groomers are the same. And we pick up on things usually quicker than what the owners do because they're looking right at the skin in ways that you don't see that at home yourself ordinarily. With the, the bathing, we're wetting them right down and getting to see right down to the skin and then the blow dryer something we're doing is looking at, at the dog all over when we're doing that. You probably don't notice it because, you know, we're not like, ooh, ooh. But while we're moving the blow dryer and the bath and using our hands, we're feeling and looking for anything that looks unusual. Um, and so one of the benefits of professional grooming is that we can find things, not always, we still miss stuff, but um, we can find things and either help you with something at home that you can do or tell you you need to go see the vet. Um, Bear really does not like water on his face, so we do that at the end. If anybody's wondering why I haven't wet his actual head. I usually just use a washcloth and give him a little scrub down. Getting sleepy. Have a lovely night, Hannah. Thank you so much for your help today. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a good sleep and we will see you on Monday for our next live stream. Have a good weekend.
Are you ready? This yeah, is the challenge. But you've already had time to warm up on it. I have haven't. you been practicing? I, I have not practiced. I wish I did. <laughs> okay, um, let's see if I can do it. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. How many packs of pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick while Peter Piper was picking packs of pickled peppers? Oh my god. Go. Wait, is your face in the camera? No. no I'd no. like to see your Why? face. Just no, come stand over come here. On, they're going to make fun of my mouth. I know, your mouth is amazing. Come stand over here. No. I don't want any. No, I don't really care. Don't look at my mouth. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. How many pickled peppers? Peter Piper packed. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. How many packs of pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick when Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers? I did it. Then you did not I do it. That was definitely not it. <laughs> that was not it. No one else can do that either. You're inhumane. Not inhumane. I'm human. <laughs> You're inhumane, but I'm human. Inhumane is like you're a abuser of people. Yeah, and animals. And animals. <laughs> <laughs> you're unhuman, I mean. It's not hard, my love. Okay, ready? Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. How many packs of pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick while Peter Piper was picking packs of pickled peppers? Mm. I don't know why I can do that. I did it in one That's shot. That's crazy. Last night that when Jet's, Jet was telling it to me and I was like, blah, 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 and he's just like, no. Ruth Lambert is like, no. Everyone's gone. <laughs> Everybody at home is now going. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. Angela suggested I move my phone before it picks up some puppy nuggets.
I challenge you. You challenge me? I challenge thee. You challenge me? I challenge thee. To what? A scissors, paper, rock off. A scissors, paper, rock off? A scissors, paper, rock off. Oh my god, it's starting to sound like Shrek now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's what are we doing? You need a champion. I need a champion. Yeah, I slapped you with my glove. Well, who's going to play for you? You need a champion too, is that uh, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I need a champion too. So, what we're doing, we're doing a scissors, paper, rock off, but we're using our Patreon supporters as our champions. Yes. And what we would like, the Patreon got. Okie dokie, little Chino's come home, Bear has calmed down. <laughs> Eager boy, the thinner baby. Um, all right, so Maisie's in tomorrow, and Whiskey is in next week. That's when they're coming in. So I'll we'll have updates for you, and if I'm feeling up to it next week, we might do a little live stream extra just for Whiskey.
Kathy. Hey, Kathy, how you doing?
be a very good day. That is for sure. Sorry, I did lay them on a fire there. Five minutes 
but you have to listen to him be a big baby for five minutes, so that's the hard part. He is, I promise you, absolutely okay, by the way. He just has a lot to say about being stuck in a bathtub. That's all. He's a bit of a high-strung doggy. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah. One little turd bag. You waited till I stood right next to you. How you doing? <laughs> 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 Oh, that's really nice, Amber. How sweet. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, okay. Bear's going to be the last doggy dog for the day. <coughs> oh, Bear. Hush it up. You are fine. So, we'll blow dry him with the high velocity dryer and that should blow out the rest of his undercoat and leave him with beautiful, shiny, healthy top coat and whatever undercoat that wasn't ready to come out, of course. But yeah, he should be looking amazing by the end of this. But yeah, this, the five minutes soaking with this dog is pretty tough. So, I'm actually standing, I'm not too far away from him, but I've got my back to him because if I look at him, he gets worse. His behavior gets way out of control. So I just stand with my back to him, but I can see him in my screen. So I know that he's all right. <laughs> and because I have my back to him, he kind of just <coughs> mostly sits relatively patiently and waits. Relatively, not entirely. You're okay, a couple more minutes. Oh, that's that's really nice, Amber. I got um, Tiny's nose and paw prints, and I absolutely love them. I've still got them. They're visible. I see them every day, and they're very special. Ooh, is it going to be your 70th birthday, Kathy? Wow, that's epic. Congratulations. Oh no, it's not, it's your husband's 70th, but not yours. Sorry if I jumped the gun, but congratulations to your husband. Oh, it was a year? Okay. You are oh, right, so it's your 69th this year. <laughs> 69. <laughs> 69 is a pretty epic achievement too, so I'll cut. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Ooh, 
Ooh, okay, that's exciting. They sound like so much fun. I can't quilt, but I'd totally go and buy all the fabric. I just like buying fabric. It's all so pretty. And then I would just keep it and never do anything with it, which I already have some quilting fabric that I have and I don't do anything with. <laughs> uh, yeah, Heather will probably finish up either on time or a little bit early today, which is very exciting because I'm kind of just not doing that great today. So I appreciate a good early slash on time finish. I love Alex. He's just a whiner. He really is. He doesn't mean to be, but what well, he probably means to be. He's just a big whiny baby. Initially, when I first started grooming him, I thought that I was doing something wrong or horrible. But I've come to learn that he is, in fact, just a big whiny baby. He does it at home, too. If he doesn't get what he wants, then he whines. Don't, yeah. Um, he is like a big farm dog and he, he gets to roam quite a distance and enjoy life and do what he wants to do. So being cooped up in this small room is not ideal for him. It was worse in the, in the mobile grooming trailer. He was way worse. He's done heaps better since he's been coming to the salon. But I think he just doesn't love to be cooped up in a small room. Because even when I let him out and he can just throw him around until his mum gets here, he still whines. I think he just likes to be out in the open in the paddocks and fields and gets to run around and do what he wants. That's my best guess. How good is it when you don't have to drive? Dale doesn't like my driving, so he always drives if he's in the car. And I usually don't complain. Sometimes I say I'm driving, especially if it's my car. But most of the time I'm like, yeah, you can drive. Oh. You're fine. It's about wash, you're not dying. Ooh, a big casino hotel. I've never been to a casino. Hop up, I want to wash your butthole. Oh, you're a rat bag. Okay, 
Ed, you get a project in mind before you go, so that you can sort of shop for that project. You just drink that conditioner, like, where did it go? Your hair must be so thirsty. I feel like that was not enough. Let me get another bottle. We need more. Don't
child sir mong. Ito tong bonggas tayo. Extends or is our tayo.
Uh, yeah, there you go, Kane. Right? They're meant to be used, not packed up. So I made an effort to let the kids enjoy them. Even though I, Dale was the same, like our initial thing was, no, these are so special, they can't be used. <laughs> uh, they are featured in photos of the kids that being, you know, not on purpose, but they were there, they were being used. So there's, there's memories of them when they finally fall apart and we inevitably chuck them out at some point. <laughs> Yes, I know, you're a big baby. You don't have to tell me, I already know. Oh, cool. Towns you haven't been to before? That's exciting. I don't know about where you are, but where I am, if you travel in, you know, a little off the beaten path, there's some pretty cool towns around, and there's not much to do, but there's always something a little bit quirky that you can find. Obviously not every town, but if you if you look hard enough, you find some fun places to go. <laughs> It's usually pretty good for the blow dryer. Fingers crossed he stays that way. Here's some music and blow dry.
Okie dokie. One semi dry big baby. Oop. Calm down. Wait. Wait. No. You know that you're not going to barrel out of here. Stop. When you calm down, you can get out. Stop. Good boy. Nope. Back up. Back up. You need to back up. I can't let this off. Come on. No. I'm not going to fight you. You know you need to sit up nicely. Good boy. Let's go. Oh my goodness. It's like a bat out of hell. Oh, you got wicky ears and your tail's wet. Alright, so I do wrestle in quite a bit just to try to get as much of this dry and I do it in the bath. Thank you so much, Amber, by the way. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Amber did a 99 cents, $1 um, super chat, super thanks. Thank you. That is awesome and very much appreciated. Um, yeah, I, he's, he really doesn't tolerate having that blow dryer on his head at all. And he carries on like an absolute pork chop. I can wrestle him better in the bathtub than I can on the table, like more safe. So that's about as dry as that area is going to get. And um, we can just leave it be. <laughs> Here's a goose. Here's more music and blow drying. Playing all my time My thoughts make me tired Just running through my mind 
Fighters, we won't surrender now. We know hard times come easy. We're feeding us with hope.
Okie dokie. That's not a very good camera angle. Just dry as dry I can be. Do you guys remember I said he's, because he's so prone to hot spots, I have to get him like, a mi not 100%, a million percent dry to prevent him um, from getting those hot spots. You need to make sure there's no moisture left on his skin. So it is literally a million times dried. Come here, rat bag. Angie Ward. Hey Angie Ward, thanks for subscribing and welcome to the fur family. So that was a lot of blow drying, um, but honestly, a million times dry, that's what we wanted to do. Also, when the coat's dry, the, like, the dead hair just flies out anyway, so when it comes to brushing, we're not trying to de-shed him with the brush, we're just detangling and getting him, you know, all shiny and looking pretty and there actually should not be that much undercoat coming out however his butt was fluffy as heck 
and these thighs, like holy moly, so fluffy. Yeah, I know, you're a baby. I know, I know. So there's just some old like compacted hair in there. Even it wasn't that long ago that I groomed him. He's obviously really, really getting this thick, heavy coat coming in. Oh, it's nearly, we're going into winter too. So uh, he probably is, yeah, getting a big, thick winter coat coming in. We turn the kitchen up a little bit for the winter, but dead hair in there. I'm just gonna grab a de-shedding rake. And just gently give that a little bit of a push. So this is a razored rake. Um, you don't do too much with this because it will cut through healthy hair as well. Live hair, you don't want to do that. Hold still, please. But it is great to just get things moving along a little bit. The tail is so full. I don't like using that on tails, but. seem to be worse than the other side so likely I just didn't get in there with the bath very well. Alright. Oh, stand up nice and straight for me. Standing a bit funny, mate, and that muscle's tucking in. I'm trying to get all that old yucky hair out that you don't want in there. His coat is definitely recovering very nicely. He's very lucky. Uh, his whole back end ended up getting shaved as a part of his treatment. So from like here back, this was all actually shaved off. So um, I'm impressed with how it's grown back. camera doesn't show it up all that well but just in that few little strokes that I've done I've seen the coat just go like <laughs> 10 times shinier it's amazing get all that dead hair out if your dog's coat is dull like usually it's just dead hair if you give it a good brush and a good de-shed you'll fix the problem So we're a bit tangly in his belly. I'm gonna have to. He's just a little bit sensitive about having his belly brushed. He doesn't like it. Understandably, like who could blame him? And his um, woolly does not go into its sheath, so you gotta be careful of that thing too. Because it's just hanging out there, blowing in the wind. Somewhere. Where is it? Not my favourite part of my job. Ugh. Uh, why did they shave the dog? So he was overcome with some serious um, infection on his skin, uh, bacterial or um, fungal type infection. And most of his hair had fallen out already, um, but he just, his skin was in such bad shape, they sort of shaved it all back to tr help treat him and get him back on track. So 
You're just doing so much better, aren't you? All right, that's pretty good to me. Let's get up here. Come on, good boy. Come here, stop pulling. Stop, stop, stop. You're a rat bag. I want to brush out your beautiful mane. Oh, don't you do that, you sneaky little fella. You definitely have a lot of hair here. I'm not trying to be brushing your ears, but if you keep moving, they're going to get brushed over. I'm actually really impressed that that hair has grown back. Um, and so healthy. That is not something that always happens. And you could shave the dog one time, two times, ten times, and maybe nothing goes wrong. But one time, any one of those times, we don't know which one, it could go wrong. So... That is very lucky. I would say because the hairs fell out rather than getting shaved off, that is like why they've grown back nicely maybe. I don't know, that's a guess. What do I know? Oh my goodness, who's a pretty boy? Who's a pretty boy? Me, I'm a pretty boy. No, it's you. You're right. Oh my goodness, don't ear whack me, man. I still haven't got over my tail slapping from yesterday. <laughs> his mane, he's never had a full mane. I know dogs don't have manes, but he has like a mane. And um, it's never been full, but right now it is fluffy AF and beautiful. Don't do it, don't do it. Stop. Oh, you're a butthole. You are a butthole. Did you actually growl at me, you little gremlin? You little gremlin beast. Yeah, you are restuck. Put me in a gremlin. All right, I'll spin you around to the other side. So I'll just pick up some of this fluffy undercoat and it's all dead hair, it's all very dull and it, that's what makes their coat dull. When you take it out, it gets shiny. Court Jester, hey Court Jester. How you doing? Turn around, over here. Don't be stupid. Oh, don't be stupid. You don't have to headbutt me in the guts every time you don't like something either, mister. Are you good there? <laughs> Yep, just in time for the German Shepherds. Who is being a very beautiful boy today. In looks, not attitude or personality. <laughs> you just such a big baby, that's all. The big baby boy. Alright, let me just get this last of this undercoat out and you'll be good to go. Oh, can you see? You can't see. You cannot see how shiny it gets. Which is just so disappointing to me. I'm doing good. I'm glad to hear that you're doing a bit better. You are having a rough day like on Monday or Sunday for you. I'm glad that you're feeling a little bit better today. Oh my goodness, you are so pretty. Are you excited? You get to go home in a minute. Are you going to let me have a look at your nails today? Definitely a very pretty boy. That was a 
lot of hair today, mister. I'm just going to put the blow dryer on super quick while I get this hair off the table. <laughs> Yeah, stop it. Lift up this one. No, go this way. Alright, and the other one now. There we go. Good boy. Hairy monster. Hairy monster. I'm very wary of cutting German Shepherd nails. I don't like it. And uh, German Shepherds will bite first and then think about having a conversation with you in about five to seven business days. So I am very wary of doing German Shepherd nails. It's not my favorite thing to do. If they don't need doing, I ain't doing it. next week. Take care of yourself and keep resting. Oh, out of the way. No, 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 no. No gremlin doggies welcome. There you go. His back ones are fine. He's like I said, he's a pretty active boy, so he didn't really need much off there. Should we make yourself pretty? Pew 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 pew. Quick brush. Oh my goodness, he is beautiful. Uh, I will freely admit, like I am terrified of German shepherds. These things can take you out. They can take you out. Um, but I just think they are like the most beautiful dog. They're so freaking beautiful. Uh, but they're an aloof breed. They're not a like, yeah, people kind of dog. They're more like, and who are you? Um, so, you know, I'm wary of them. I'm, he's not here to be my friend. He tolerates me because I tied him up here and he didn't have a choice. Um, and I'm not silly. I know that. Stay here. Here you go. Uh, but as far as like being friends with somebody you see every six weeks, we're as good of friends as we're going to get. So, um, you know, he tolerates me, don't you? Uh, but he's just looking to get out of here, <laughs> which is pretty normal. That's, you know, he wants to go home. He wants to be with these people. He wants to be at his house where he has a job to do. And, um, and, and I'm not his friend. So that's how German Shepherds generally are. They're mostly the same, unless they're like highly trained and socialized. This is pretty normal for a German Shepherd. So yeah, he's done um, and I'm done. So I'm gonna go clean up and then have a shower and get some dinner. Why are you licking that? That's where you've been, ew. <laughs> he's happy. He'll be happy when I put his collar on him and take him out to the car. 
All right, guys, thank you so much to our Fur Family Legends, Pam Swasser Kittens, and Amber McMahon. Thank you to our moderators, um, it's Hannah Hammond, Alex F. Honey Bee and Debbie M, who we got to see today, which was lovely. Um, thank you guys so much. We can't do it without you. Thank you to our Patreon members. Um, you guys are awesome. And your little badges are down there somewhere. There's Debbie's uh, Debbie Wolf. Awesome. Right now. Um, yeah, thank you. We uh, really, truly appreciate your support, especially in tough times. Everybody's got doing it tough financially at the moment, I think. So... Thank you so very much. And to all of our members um, and subscribers and everybody, you guys are the absolute bomb diggity. Uh, our members, sorry, we have paying members as well. Thank you to you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, I think that's it. I did it. All right. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, stay safe, be good, and have fun. And I will see you on Monday next week. The gang. The fur family. Is to send us a.